We are back with the second semi-final of the day. Who has to face Infi, I think, is the wording that we should use here in the grand final. Will it be the first Chinese grand final since TH versus Fly? Or will Korea make it again? Will Moon make his way into the grand final again? This series... If there's a series in this world that could be even more hyped than Lawlight vs. Infi just was, it's this one. Do you guys remember WCG last game of the group stage in 2019? That was the series of the year probably. And the man who was with us in Xi'an to cast this alongside Rotterdam is now with us as well. Litard, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. I've been enjoying the games. Damn, that was absolutely epic. This Infi against uh, Low Light series, like back and forth the whole way. And I'm surprised I see that many people talking about balance. Because like this game, like this series to me, the last one was really not about balance, but just two players playing absolutely amazing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it was neck and neck as well. Close for most of it. Razor thin and yeah, super close series. Just an insane game right there. Infi does make it through. I guess he was the favorite for the majority of people out there. Do we have a favorite here between Moon and TH? Well, according to Lolaya, TH is insane against Night Elf. So uh, maybe slightly, I don't know, actually. It feels like for everybody, it should be Moon. But because of what Lolaya said, maybe it's going to be like a really close series and a 3-2 as well. I guess we can hope so. And... All of us are thinking about what matchup we're going to see also in the finals, right? And like we're kind of rooting against Mirror. But to be honest, even if we got Mirror, I think these players are just so insane that they even managed to make Breaker Wars entertaining somehow. And same would uh, would be said uh, about Moon versus Low Light potentially in the, for the third place match. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. If these four players collide somehow, it's always super entertaining. We've seen great games between TH and Infi involving Blizzard, and now there's a little development of going more tier 3 in Human Mirror, so I wouldn't be too opposed to seeing that. The thing is here now, Lolite was practicing with TH pretty much throughout the entire tournament and going into this tournament. Yesterday, he was practicing the entire night with Moon, so maybe he can give a little hint towards Moon. Rainbow, also, what do you think? Also, Infi and TH, I imagine, must have been practicing together, right? We didn't have uh, the direct contact there, but they always have stuck together, Infi and TH. In many tournaments, they find themselves uh, meeting late in the tourney. I still distinctly remember when exactly was this, like three years ago, two and a half years ago, when TH won uh, the WGL, or back then I think it was GCS, against Fly in the final. Remember that final? It was really one-sided. Fly had no chance. TH was the best player in this tournament. And Infi and TH met in the semis. That kind of should have been the grand final. That series was really close. But for the rest of that tournament, there was no competition for the humans. Is that, again, what's happening here this WGL? Are Infi and TH better than everyone else meeting in the final again? Perhaps will be the case. But Moon, of course, you know. Can't overhype Moon. Moon, the biggest legend in this game. And ahead of this tourney starting, everyone was talking about Moon. But it feels like the hype ebbed down a little bit because of yesterday's games. Yesterday's games, Moon still won. But there were some moments of weakness in there, especially in that Terrana stand game against 1-2-0, where Moon wasn't perfect all the way through. Yeah, I think that's the story of Moon in this tournament, right? He lost the map to Colorful, he lost the map to Lin, which is, of course, no shame. Yesterday, he almost had the series already and then allowed 1-2-0 back into this. So it's not the flawless, ultra-dominating Moon that we've seen in other tournaments before. Yeah, it's a tournament on multiple days, though, right? Like, it's really about the shape of the day sometimes. Yeah. Like maybe yesterday wasn't feeling it as much. Today he could definitely ace his match. Like we, we don't really know. That's the thing with Moon. Like sometimes when he shows up on form and he's absolutely on points and he's feeling it, he's just unstoppable. Like that's what we saw in Anaheim as well, where he just yeah. kind of dominated the whole way and looked like he was untouchable. So 
I guess we'll find out pretty quickly here which it is. We had Twisted Meadows vetoed from TH and I think, was that Tierna stand vetoed from Moon? Yes. Interesting. So he doesn't wow. really, I think he's a little bit tired of this super fast level three mount tanking staff on the other side of the map and then just kind of dominate. It looks like it's very tricky. Lola did win that map against Infi, but maybe it looks a little bit discouraging, like what you have to do in order to win on Tierna stand. Yeah, I think he's probably not so confident in spiraling out of control with his Warden. Lawlight plays her the best. That's the one thing I guess Lawlight is better at than Moon. And Moon's more going to rely perhaps on a straight up two base, two base kind of game without too much blinking around and stuff. I'm certainly expecting keeper strats here, mostly with expansions from the Legend. Yeah, I would agree. And before we go into this game, we see the players already. So we're just moments away from the second semifinal to start. Moon was in two of the last three WGL Grand Finals. The winter 2018 when he won against Foggy. The summer, of course, when he was defeated by Happy. Last time was eliminated in the group stage. But, you know, still great resume here. TH, his last final is quite far away. It was exactly two years ago. Remo, you mentioned it with his win overfly th on the way to becoming a first three-time champion of the gold league moon could win his second championship and we got the game on the way todd and remo here the cast is for this one take it away last refuge a map here we see the first time today and in this matchup um yeah earlier law light vetoed it that tells us a lot about the Playstyle difference between Moon and Lawlight, with Lawlight more trending towards the Warden. Here we see the Keeper now by Moon. And a really aggressive creep towards the middle with an Ancient of War. That is rare to see. Yeah, I think humans are not that worried about mercenaries. So I think if you go Warden, maybe going for the mercenary camp first is probably going to be better. But like, not only does he get like a a pretty big or that could be what could be important of a consumable at the shop he also has the enchant of war towards the human base and w actually like some of the builds that we just saw might have inspired moon as well to maybe do certain things um it's a best of five so if you want on one of the games to try and go for like you know mastia one or something like some sort of big attack you could definitely try that to try and keep th a little bit worried for the rest of the series too yeah, what Moon has been playing on this map against Human uh, quite a bit, and so it should be known by now, is Counter Expo with the Keeper with a Panda second and going into Bears. Late game big bear armies with a few Dryads and stuff, which is kind of old school. You know, nowadays it's mostly about mass archers with marksmanship and mountain giants. I'm sure he's capable of that style as well. But when I saw him on LR, it was mostly this Keeper, Panda, Counter Expo, Bears kind of thing. I wonder if that's going to be the play here once again. Keeper finds a one of mana steel. Can be very impactful early game. Also goes for a circlet. It's going to have a very quick level two and probably a fast harass, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, there is no second shot of war anywhere He's for now. Tiki. I think you got Tom of Intel. That's pretty nice as well. Uh, but on the other side, we hired the forest troll shadow priest. Super important against a keeper. It helps so much. And I'm not sure, like, does he want to creep the Murlocs first? He's getting a tower in his main base here, his TH. And according to Lolaet, TH is incredible against Keeper. Like, it's almost like he cannot lose against it. So let's see what, what he's found out that apparently the other humans haven't. A lot of blue dots moving towards the north. Moon getting ready for this harass. Keeper, archers, and some wisps as well. Or the first charge coming in of the one of mana steel. AM can summon the next water elemental here for quite some time. And off we go. TH not afraid in the first face of adversity. And the detonates hit big. Oh my god, that's gonna be a ton of damage towards these peasants. Yeah, and he caught the forest roll shadow priest, so there is no more abolish available against the entangle, against the trance. Moon looking to try and do a ton of damage here. TH is kind of aborting the creeping of the expo. He sent a bunch of militia back home. There's still one of them fighting. Oh my god. I'm not a human player, but this looks a bit disastrous here. Yeah, I think Moon really noted that TH and Infi, they seem to want to expand a lot in that last series as well. And he's like, well, you guys like to expand. I'm going to have the Wisps ready, and I'm really going to punish you when you go for that. And now he's 2.6. He got so much experience from that. 
the tech just started for TH, so plan B, go to tier 2. But man, that's not a good timing. We see Moon we already on way on, a, well on his way to tier 2, around 60%. It's gonna be a massive advantage with the second hero timing. It's gonna be a tavern hero for Moon, very likely. But then again, he played uh, Keeper and Demon Hunter in the past. That was against Human, of course. Against uh, Orc, excuse me. And Moon now. Seems like he's still expecting the expansion from his opponent. Staffing up north, but uh, no, that's not the case. Tia just taking the Merc Camp and getting good experience. And Moon is finishing at the creeps on the expansion of TH here. Ne don't do that against an undead. That's, that's my advice for you. But against a human here, apparently he's confident enough. He knows that he's going to get level free from that. And now he can start letting those uh, entangles reign supreme. He hasn't skilled trance level 2 yet or entangle level 2. Maybe he's waiting a little bit. Yeah, with there being two Shadow Priests, I guess it's unrealistic to see a lot of last hits, kills with the entangle. Moon falls back a little bit. Perhaps a bit of a mistake by Moon not looking for that uh, creep at the Merc. If he had a Wisp there, if he came in for the creep jack, that could have been very dangerous for TH. The human took a bit of a risk there, taking the big camp, but got rewarded. Yeah, Moon took trance level 2 to creep with here, and he's stealing the shop away from TH right now. That's huge. He's gonna get another big consumable. Yeah. And behind this, like... He doesn't actually have to play the Mass Archer style if he wants to. He could just play them all straight up. But I already saw four Moon Wells earlier and he's already got quite a few Archers. He starts tier 3 immediately. Oh my god, that's such a fast tier 3. And no Hunter's Fall, so it looks like Archers are the play. Delays the second hero as well. Tier 3 speed at all cost. And I guess if you play the Mass Archer style, then the Panda doesn't really fit in well. He doesn't carry an orb. He doesn't buff the archers. He doesn't have healing for them. Marksmanship is Demon Hunter second. Wow. He's just rushing marksmanship. <laughs> That's so crazy. And he has a wisp on the expo of uh, TH to see if he takes it there. TH coming in. He's feeling confident because he has a lot of mana on the Shadow Priest, but Demon Hunter could do something about that. There's a wisp. Oh, Trent Hell. Doing a decent job. Great positioning also by TH, keeping his Shadow Priest alive as long as he is. If you misplace them a little bit, archers rain down their arrows and they die very fast. Well, that was... the demon was lazy. He could have just walked right there, he just stopped instead. Saving 10 seconds, all the min-maxing here. Moon needs to level this demon hunter though. Level 1 demon in the late game is extremely underwhelming. Should he get to 3? Or maybe even level 4, then it can be really good. But that's gonna take some time. I guess this is the proper map to play Demon on. There's always plenty of creeps to go around. And of course the intention is that he's gonna disable this Mountain King. Who has zero experience so far. Yeah, uh, it's so smart actually to go Demon Hunter, I think, with this. Anticipating that there's gonna be the Mountain King. Looks like TH wants to do a tier 2 expansion. Catches the Wisp here. Stonebolt and kill. Demon's already... He's going to be slightly over level 2 here in a second, and by the time marksmanship, marksmanship is finished, I guess the stars are going to be up on the expo, but then it's such a strong timing for Moon to potentially fight that. And the fact that he's creeping now, he's getting a lot of uh, gold and experience. He can buy orb pretty easily when he reaches tier 3. Those items on the demon, by the way. Once he hits 3, he is going to be such a boss. Could even creep up the natural now, more solo experience for the demon, and then look to pressure, see how well that goes, and perhaps even counter expand behind that whilst all waiting for those uh, tier 3 upgrades. Yeah, keep in mind, he has to scroll of the beast. Yes. And there's not gonna, there's no way there's gonna be priest dispel, I think, by the time it goes across the map, if he goes now. Like, if he waits too long, it could be tricky. Yeah, this timing is gonna be insane. Triple circlet gloves, rune bracers, and soon to be the orb. Well, I guess you put the orb rather on the keeper, actually. The first one, at least. That's a combat demon hunter right there. Yeah. Did Made he find for five? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome to my life. And he's going tier three with the eight towers on the expo. What? Yeah, he's not actually expanding. He he knew he was scouted by a wisp, so he's he pretended to try to expand there, but actually doesn't go through with it. But didn't he upgrade the towers? I'm not sure. Yeah, I hope he didn't. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. The ultimate mind game. 
Actually, it's smart because if you expand on tier 2 like this, Night Tails, they're going to think, oh, he's staying tier 2. All I have to do is get Giants, and then I won. And then you just rush Knights. And he's like, no, actually, you didn't win. I got Knights. Dude, these items for Moon, though. Mana Stone as well on top of everything else. Yeah. The edge creeping in the corner. How close is he to 3? Oh, he's very close to level 3 MK. Mountain King is really low already. He might fall to TP here pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely. Minus 100. Can he maybe steal the turtle? Once you get the big boy. Level 3. And parry apt. Okay. Gets more tanky. But Moon now with his tier 3 online has absolute map control. Nice thing is there's still one camp left to creep for the MK that's up on the high ground, the lab. Oh, and the AM is running south where he scouted the expansion. Might be able to get a cancel with the water element. It's so rare to see a one base with just one base on last refuge like this, but it's really credit to Moon for realizing that TH was going to try to expand no matter what. Archmage goes on the other side of the map. Demon Hunter staff there already. He's trying to push him back. And I think Moon will be close enough with his army to prevent that from going down. And if I was TH, I'd cancel that farm oh, on the X. That, that's not going to be happy. He's trying to intercept the Archmage. The dangerous play here. AM, no way really of saving himself. Keeper's coming in with the Entangle. But the Expo might die now. He, this Water Elemental is going to town. He tries to catch the army. That Berserker is certainly falling. I think the Expo dies. True. That's going to be a cancel there, but how much is TH going to have to pay for that? And how is he going to get back to the main? Oh, that's huge. Hey, he doesn't have a staff. That's such a gamble to head across the map like this. No Zeppelin, no staff, no TP. He's even creeping the Murloc. What is going on? Treans being summoned. There's only one Arcane in the main. That doesn't deal with these Treans very fast at all. We see the Pally coming out. The Book Might of take the out the altar, but it's only archers. So the Book of the Dead is going to summon it immediately. Militia coming in from the back. He's trying to force him back immediately. Keeper is going to get slowed and surrounded, and he's going to have to TP here. One archer went down, but I think only the one... Okay, two archers went down, plus a TP forced. And TH holds, cancelled the expo. Nice play by the human. And immediately, Infi realizes, oh, he TP'd back home. Maybe I have time to go bottom right and creep the red because I got that Book of the Dead that's going to be useless later, especially if he brings a Wisp. Guess what? Moon is starting to run in that direction, but actually he stops and creeps the Murloc. I wouldn't be surprised if he headed for the red immediately after in anticipation because you can't be letting TH creep that too easily. Yeah, shouldn't he go there right away? I mean, shouldn't he yeah. have gone there right away? I think so. I'm surprised he stopped because, like, even like the experience he's getting now is not so key. Uh, doesn't really need that. Cloak of Flames acquired here for TH. Not the best items you can get from the red. Especially back. because he's not playing claps, so you don't really need to go inside of the army, right? And then you get targeted if you do. Yeah, I guess at least with that, the MK has a bit of damage output potential even without mana, thanks to burn. Yeah, he's creeping the demon only. He's gonna be level four. That demon's gonna be insane. Yeah. Like, yeah, if the game is like another one of those epic games like we saw in the last series, that demon's gonna get six, and we're gonna lose our minds over here. Hell yeah, dude. We we want to have three hour best of fives all the way through today. Twenty twenty games in total. <laughs> twenty maps. Hell yeah. All right, here we go. Here comes the big fight. Stormbolt hits the demon, can't get the burns out yet. Only a single MG here in front to tank. Now the MK is dry. Second Mountain Giant does come in. Throw the beast pop. Lots more damage now on the archers, but the knights are moving forward. It's only a single orb of venom. The demon hunter is not carrying one. It seems like Moon is having a tough time just finding the damage up because the archers have to run. They can't attack. TH has reached his tier 3 timing. He's got inner fire, knights. Everything is very durable. He's got the triple hero to support. Heal scroll from the keeper trying to save these archers, but again, they can't stand still and do their damage. They're just having to run away. Yeah, coming Wisp out comes for the in detonate. there. You always talk about uh, inner fire rifles. How about those knights with inner fire? They're quite scary as well against this army in particular. Sundering blades makes it easy to deal with giants compared to any other unit you would ever get. Gets another cancel on the expo. And Moon broke up keep earlier right now. He's like super worried about his attack and his fights. He's on 58. Against TH's 50 supply, but somehow TH's army looks almost scary at this point. Yeah, where are the kills coming from? There's no Naga here for additional damage. There's no second orb for additional damage. The demon is doing a good job, you know, keeping the mana away. 
He has double guess... staff for the demon. Yeah, true. So even if demon goes really low, he can staff that home, staff it right back into the fight. But nothing's dying you from the human side with inner fire here. It's really tricky. So surprised not going for a second orb. Yeah, he already broke upkeep, so I don't think he had that much gold for it. It seems like he's panicking a little bit here against this army, whereas TH is just casually saving a whole lot of gold here without breaking upkeep. He has TP, so he knows he can get out. He never got staff though. That's very important. Because the shop was killed before he could buy that. Getting closer to double level fives here for Moon, by the way. He's gonna get the one green camp. And we have a single camp left in the bottom right. Would be valuable for both these players. That's a huge power spike if he can get that. Those archers ideally need to connect onto the priest, but if they do, then the knights are gonna go to town on the archers. So it's very tricky. Because he's actually going for the fight. Three MGs. Not so easy to ignore them anymore. The problem is that you need too many Wisps to deal with this army effectively. And then when he finally detonates, then every time TH is pulling back and then letting Brilliance do its work. Demon's gonna get staffed out. Oh, the bash! That was a little dangerous. Wisps come in for the detonate again. Heroes are completely dry once more, but the archer is still getting threatened by the knights. Staff back in from the demon hunter. He's full health again, and now the raid boss returns with more burns to throw and more damage to put out. He finally has the orb of venom. We were waiting for that for a long time. That adds in a lot more damage. Watch Elemental trying to take out this tree of eternity, tree of life, excuse me. It doesn't quite work out. That's more experience, and level five for the keeper. Level three yes. entangle instantly skilled. This 50 supply of TH is just so scary. Moon's on 58 and he's still somehow like he's struggling to win those fights. I feel like his micro hasn't been the cleanest necessarily for Moon, by the way. Like the archers, sometimes they pull back. They don't really go back in to shoot. One of the giants also pulled back and wasn't really shooting super well. So it's a little bit surprising. He needs to execute that a little bit better. But again, he needs to keep on bringing wisps against this army. Otherwise, it's going to be really tough. And again, taking a lot of damage. We thought he was... Unkillable, but he is proving to be slightly vulnerable at times. Invul force on the MK, demon staffed out. But the Tele staff is on cooldown still, however, the main is close, so he should be back into the fight soon. Wist again from the back coming in with a big time detonates. Archers again exposed. Mountain giants taunting as much as they can. Supply is getting closer and closer. And he's not trance into the expo here, so that's gonna force TH to run back. If he doesn't, he's gonna lose a ton of peasants. And then that's going to be even more experience going to Moon, whose demon is very close to level 5. Yeah. Important level here for him to gain. And Moon's ready to fight here. 53 supply against 54. He's drained a lot of that mana away from those priests. So I think he realizes that if the priests run out of mana, Treants and Entangle is going to dominate. So many Treants still all over again, aiming for these archers, of course. They have to run, they have to hide behind the mountain giants. Level 5 now for the Demon Hunter. Has a strong burn now if he skills it. But even go in evasion. Oh, the AM in trouble. Getting focused. Dispel against the Entangle. AM still has to fall back. Holy Light hits him. Heals him up a little bit, but everything seems to be so bruised for TH. May have to give up his expansion now. Yeah, what does he do? Does he chase the army and leave Treants in the expo? It looks like he's leaving some of the units. But he, I don't think he necessarily has to chase. Like, it's really hit or miss, right? If he's pushed back then and leaves the expo alive, that could come to really be bad for him later on. So he's just going to get on top of the expo and try and take it out. And what TH you... is going to go for the counterattack. What you pointed out earlier, that shot being missing and there being no staff, we see how much it hurts TH now. Knights were saved on low HP, but he couldn't heal them. The Paladin simply doesn't have enough mana and also doesn't have high enough levels to do that. TH yeah. going for the last camp on the map. What's that gonna give him? Level 5 AM and one semi big item. But his mansion is dead and Moons is gonna remain alive as it seems. He's already solo hit points on so many of his units here. This is really tricky a situation. Like those priests need to go to work and heal all of those knights. The double orb is so good for Moon, like the Demon Hunter yeah. and the Keeper, they do a lot of damage, so those giants, they're just gonna sustain everything at the front. And now, all the pressure in the world is on TH, like he has to attack that expo, or do something himself, maybe expand himself. Moon's the one to engage into him, oh my god. Forces the TP out right away, TH doesn't want to take this fight, he needs more time to heal. And that's more time for Moon to mine off of these two bases.
Would love to know the upgrades here between those two. Especially for Tia, it shouldn't be too high. He wasn't that rich, really. He's 0-0 zero, zero on the Knights. Yeah. He's clicking on every unit, the Observer. <laughs> and then eventually he gets to the one with the upgrades. Yeah, <laughs> MGs are also 0-0. Zero, zero. We saw Archer upgrades earlier. There should be at least 2-0. Maybe 3-0 yeah. at this point. And then Moon would expand now. Like He's just going to get a ton of units. Again, the pressure, all the pressure in the world is on TH. He still couldn't afford a staff. He didn't sell the crystal ball for some reason. He found the crystal ball in the bottom right. I was probably pretty sad about it. Just wait for that Shadow Melt reveal. <laughs> but here's the thing about attacking an expo like this against a player like Moon. He's always going to send a ton of wisps. Maybe even the one from the gold. Just yeah. remove all of your mana and say, get the hell out of my game. Demon gets caught. Remember, there is the staff, but you don't want to lose all your hit points from the get-go. He's connecting onto the priest with the wisps. Demon Hunter taking a lot of damage. Where's that mana burn? There it is. Whew, almost had a stone ball. Perhaps he had time to use it. He'll throw for the demon as well. So much focus on the second hero, but he is so damn tanky. There's always a staff reserved for him. Archers this time can't be reached at all. The MGs are blocking nicely, but Moon's going to fall back. His second hero now dangerously low. Invul transferred. And with that, he stays alive. Wait, the keeper doesn't have the staff. The oh, demon true, he doesn't have the staff. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I was like, why is he not staffing? Oof, he swapped that around finally. 65 speed play against 64. Moon's probably going to pull some more wisps in a second here. And if he can hold. Demon's already 5.2. If he finally would get that metamorphosis, we're still ways off. But he needs to mount the hold here against this giant inner fire army of humans. More teams threatening the expansion, now turning their fire towards the main army, where the Keeper is dropping very low. Heal scroll has to be used. That was the last scroll for Moon. Knights finding good damage. The heroes are dancing. Moon trying to keep his heroes alive as, much, as best as he can. Demon again took quite a bit of damage. The Wisp yeah, into I the back line. Nice detonate once more. And this, these archers now seem to be very protected. Keeper very far forward. Demon low HP still. Slow is kicking in. Demon out of the fight again. Oh my god, the, the Keeper run in! What's the Keeper doing? Oh, what did he do? Massive mistake by Moon! Just donates away his first hero, or oh does he? God. Oh my god, Moon! What I think he was, was trying, that? He was trying to summon Trance on the right side, but he ran instead of a human army. And there was... I mean, the MK was ready for that. Archer is gonna stop working on the casters. Now it's all for the Demon Hunter to try and carry. I'm sure he's restarted the Keeper on the other side, but there's tri-human hero available here. There's leveling out of control. There's brilliance level three, so if he doesn't detonate more wisp eventually, those spells are gonna replenish. Those priests are doing so much too. Huh. Crystal ball, reveal the archers, let's do it. <laughs> doesn't do it at the moment. Demon, Demon 5.8. Yeah, he's close to six, man. Like oh one or two God. water elementals, he gets it. He wants those water elementals right now. Or even better, the knights. Stormbolt connects. Yeah, there's still no staff. There's still no staff. Oh, oh, you can't even save that knight. Oh, he's not level 6 yet. So close. One or two more units here. The 200 IQ losing the keeper. He wanted to do that. <laughs> All plan. Oh, there's the crystal ball. Look at that crystal ball. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if Demon 6 is going to be enough here against this army. I mean, Brilliance level 3 is so insane here with this. It benefits every priest, the tri hero. The, the thing one is, sorceress. Thing is, he is out of money, and Moon is waiting for the keeper to come back. When he comes back, he should be able to find more kills and find level six. And he can afford to lose this expansion. He has still the Tree of Eternity. Yeah. It's so tricky because he had, he had to use Wisp the whole time and then replace them in the gold mine. And he's gonna need a whole lot more here. To be honest, if he sends Wisp now and kill the water elementals, he gets level six. Yeah, he might even get it without it. Archers are gunning them down. One more kill. There it is! Instantly popped. He was waiting for that. But he's taking a lot of damage already. But also returning quite a bit of damage. Has a heal potion still. And this keeper must be back soon. Yeah, the archers need to work on these casters here a little bit better. The tree is being targeted. He's running away from the fight. The tree is trying to get out of there. Keeper still not back out. Moon has an expansion in the top left. No way. Oh, what Moon? Here's the late game insurance. Top left. This one isn't even so important. How crazy is this? Another mana burn comes in. There was one storm bolt before, but this demon hunter is only getting tickled. 1425 HP. Ult is running out soon, but the keeper returns to the battlefield. Yeah, TH 
completely mined out in the main base, long distance mining from the expansion. He doesn't have the gold to restart the base. He's gonna, this is it. He's gonna have to all in. He might even bring the militia down there. And Moon, he's got Moon Wells to work with. And he's got, I, I, he moved the main tree actually to the left side, I think. Ah, yeah, I think you're right. Because I don't see it on the minimap. All right, so that means be... he, whatever his staff, his staff's there. So he can't really, like the demon double staff, he's not gonna be as good, but I mean, he's already level six. Yeah, if the demon gets slowed and then has to be staffed, he's going to take forever to come back to the fight. But we have only one sorceress left. Moon on two mining bases, TH on zero. It looks very much like the fifth race is taking map one here. That was su such a well-played game. Like, the, the usage of the wisps, he always brought the right amount, he always went to the right location and detonated perfectly. If one of, any one of those times he doesn't do it the way he did it, he might just die. So he's playing incredible here. Yeah, this is what we'd been hoping for. These top four so far are delivering insanely in the semifinals. Preemptive wisps here before the fight even begins. Demon coming in from behind. He entangles the mountain king here. He's gonna mana burn the paladin up first. Demon, I don't, does he have metamorphosis back? I don't think so, right? Dodges the Stormbolt with the inwall, and that way all the damage flies into nowhere. Another Stormbolt, another burn, I mean, and the MK is about to drop. A few more right clicks. Oh my god, he's healing somehow. But the burn finishes the job. That is the GG. And 104 Moon. Whoo, ladies Super and gentlemen. Convincing. What an opening to this series. <clears throat> 1 0 for the greatest of all time. But how. Like, it's kind of fascinating how similar the opening was from Moon and TH, both with great aggression early on, willing to sacrifice their town portal for delay on the expansion. But from that moment on, everything was kind of different. Same when you compare TH and Infi. Like, it's the same matchup, it's the same idea, but it's a very different spin. Yeah, super cool to see. The, the Keeper Demon, is that the new play? We thought it was specific against Lin's special style but here also it works out well it is map dependent the demon needs to get good levels and ideally good items which he certainly had here crazy good items with the bracers and the gloves and everything else that was one hell of a game again to kick it off so Ilfi in this situation would probably have done everything he can to get that expansion up right so TH decided very quickly to cancel the expansion and tech instead. So can you guide us through the decision making here a bit? Uh, honestly, when I watched Low Light against Infi, I was surprised that Low Light didn't commit a little more towards trying to really do a lot of damage while Infi was expanding with like more wisps and stuff. Especially on like, you know, Amazonia and stuff. I really feel like if you're a night elf, like it's such a tough camp for human to creep. You should put more effort towards that. But yeah, Moon came ready here. He's like, he's been around forever. There was once upon a time, it was kind of like that. Like you would play Demon Hunter. And then if human managed to expand and then just went like Breaker, Caster, Mortar, it was so hard to win already. And back then, sometimes Moon on maps like Secret Valley, he already relied on this kind of strategy. He brought two Wisps. He, uh, he went for the Immolation Demon Hunter. He killed a lot of peasants. He slowed you down a lot. And then after that, he played like a standard game, but like a really well played one in which he found a way to win in what was a tricky matchup at the time. So now, years later, this time he's using the Keeper, but still the same reasoning. He's like, okay, this human expansion is looking too strong. I'm gonna have a really tough time if I don't slow it down a lot or prevent it. Brings the Wisps and the execution just was there. I feel like it's more TH that disappointed a little bit. It, you know, Infi just sends like three more Militia if you go to his expo, but TH just pulled back and he just aborted the expansion immediately. And then Moon was already in his comfort zone. Yeah, especially on LR. Like, that's one of the easiest expansions we have. LR and Equiles, those are the two. And there, it's it seemed like that shouldn't be able to be prevented by the Night Elf. But here, Moon did with some excellent creeping to start things off. That was very important, getting level 2 right away. The one of Mana Steel helped. The Archer's in the right place. The Keeper and the Wisp detonates. Wisp detonates, man. They keep on coming back. Something that isn't apparently obvious how good it is in the right hands. But these top Night Elves really find the perfect way to use them and are able to play them in such a way that they make all the difference. Looks good so far. This is, by the way, the first encounter of these two throughout the entire year. So we were missing out on 
more than seven months of Moon versus TH, man. Such a shame. Oh, yeah, now that you say it, I'm looking up uh, their uh, stats right now. At WCG, they met last year. Yeah. This was basically exactly one year ago. It was the yeah. 20th of July. Today is the 19th. There it went to TH with yeah. the 2-0 in the semis. Since you're looking up stats, uh, Moon has positive stats against all the other quarterfinalists, but not against TH. It's a 15 to 24 there. So maybe TH historically is the counter to a Moon, but he needs to step it up. We're going into map number two, and that is Concealed Hill. All right. Ooh. That's kind of a scary prospect for TH, right? He tried to fast expand on LR, already didn't work out, and now you're going to Concealed, which is considerably harder. Yeah. Does he expand on this, or does he play one base? It seems like Moon would be comfortable mostly against a one base human. Yeah, actually, I was so shocked last game that he took the base on the left. I was like, wait, how dare he? Like, what is this, Twisted Meadows? But then I realized he was the main tree that he moved there, and I was really smart because to have it moved this fast, he for sure had nature's blessing from earlier. And even if he had lost his expo at some point, as long as he kept on pulling back and used Moonwells, he was always going to be fine. So really, the game was decided when he fought around the expo, pushed the expo and killed it, I think. What are we going to see on map two? Is it going to be looking similar with the early intention? I would expect TH to just play straight up one base here. At least until tier 2. Fast expanding now would surprise me, but Infi made it work earlier against Law Lion. So TH perhaps can do it too. Let's go into map 2, Concealed. The fast expansion has been a big theme of this tournament in multiple matchups, even against Orc, which really surprised me. So I think TH and Infi, they understand so much. I mean, obviously they understand how to play one base, but they're so incredibly good with expanding that they know if they manage to secure an expansion in a decent spot from there, it's just so hard to beat these guys. Yeah. And even though like TH lost one of those games, I think that he played against Focus, he won the other time around with uh, one of the expansions that he went for, and it was super convincing. Important moment here, first hero. Anything other than a keeper would be a massive surprise. Keeper it is. Against AM. I would be surprised if Moon plays Warden here once, even on Echo. I think he's going to play Keeper all the way through. Question is, is he going to vary it up with his second heroes? Yeah, he should really, like... It's not good to be predictable, but then again, he made the Demon Hunter second look super solid. I mean, what could you do against that? Typically, if you play against a Demon Hunter first, you're going to go Naga second. But if you go Naga second and the opponent has Giants, he doesn't really care, right? Like, of course, you're going to have Frozen Arrow and Fort Lightning against the Demon, but you're still going to get mana burnt all the same. I guess yeah. it'd still be more useful than NMK, though. What we have seen be very good in the late, late game against Demon Hunter is Blood Mage. Once you get him to level 3 for the level 2 Siphon, he normally wins the mana battle. And then also Banish can help out quite a bit. Possibly even Flame Strike, but more likely Banish. This game... Moon, if he goes for the demon again, it's going to be a lot harder to level in. This map doesn't really favor Night Elf creeping in the mid game, especially with Demon Hunter, because the Ancient of War is such a, touch, such a tough time walking around to get to camps. You get the yeah. first Ogre camp, yes, and then after the lab. But where do you go after? Like Red Camp? Maybe. But that's not very reliable. And the other thing you can do is the Fountain, or you have to walk super far with the Ancient of War. So, a more aggressive second hero with less creeping, I could see being valuable here. Oh, Lassie with a footy, he stole it, right? Yeah, he yeah. did. That's level 2 for the AM. That's a big deal in this early game. Yeah, actually, it's it's going to be super tricky now for uh, for Moon to manage this to get level 2. Okay, he does go for Treants there eventually. On the other side of the map. I'm surprised actually TH didn't run to the top left. Usually you, you keep that small green turtle camp for just militia on your side of the map, but seeing a keeper already there maybe kind of like made him think he should stay there. It might be a hint that he wants to expand. Yeah, he's headed towards for the expand. And he does. TH and Infi seem to be in agreement. Fast expo is what you have to do. Wait, what? And we have a pause here from the admins. 
By the way, like we're talking about the map and the second hero and stuff. You know what this map is great for is mountain giants. Yeah. Or even just fountains in general. I feel like we need to talk about them. It's the one map where you have fountains currently in the map pool. You can save a lot of units from both sides, but I think it favors Night Elf a little bit more because you got Shadow Meld that you can hide at the fountain with. Interesting situation and good that they stopped this a little earlier than in the Team League finals where... Uh, what happened? Yeah, I think Moon disconnected or something. Oh, hell no. Why? Like, how did they tell? I don't know. They said something with Moon, right? So... Yeah, they were about to type Moon, but they didn't actually do it. Yeah. I mean, better safe than sorry. I really don't want another fly law light situation. I mean, it's nice to talk to Todd, but an hour without games was... Uh, a little, a little annoying back then. Hey, could it be league. maybe TH that disconnected though? Because you had two footmen fighting a keeper plus trance for a little bit. I think that's intentional though, right? Like, isn't he buying a lot of time? Yeah, yeah, it TH? seems like he should be running away. Yeah, like he, he lost one and he was going to lose. Oh, I think he was about to lose like one and then the other one was not it. that high on hit points either. Yeah, TH got, put out the question mark right away. So I don't think he yeah. was disconnecting. Ooh, Wong tells us they said it's a desync. Oh, okay. But we continue. Okay, boys, the, pick it up from here. All right. All right. Crucial moment in the game. The expo's being crept. There were some wisps here for detonates. Here they come. And gets the one last hit. The other water elemental seems to be safe, though. It's a lot of damage towards the peasants, but the keeper is super hurt already. Yeah, the Wisps are very late this time around compared to last game. So now the the Expo is already almost entirely crept. Archmage gets a second ring! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Not like this. Does that feel familiar? It, it feels so bad. Like, you know that your Archmage is gonna hit, like, I don't know, a hundred times this game. And every time that he hits, he's gonna do plus zero because those rings are there. And the Archmage doesn't get attacked once. The side is sides. Quite a few peasants are going down here. That must be like five, maybe six. Keeper had a rough start in this game. Didn't even get level two. Lost the last hit against the footy. But got a lot of experience here. He gets level three from the trance. And I see Moon getting a building here around the center. I think. Could be a shop. That's what we've been seeing quite a bit. Far forward shop from the Night Elves. Different expo positioning compared to Infi, who was uh, placing it towards the right-hand side, towards the trees. I imagine you saw that game earlier, right? Uh, Infi versus Lolai on this map. That yeah. expo build placement just looked so yeah, amazing. Like, like towers in the back, well protected. Team. Bit of a wall in front with a blacksmith shop as well. A little avenue to retreat into. Yeah, Infi has the best bases in the world, by far. I thought he was mostly against Undead, but it's in every matchup. He, against Orc. Have you noticed what he does against Orc? He places the third farm, has to increase the inside of his base, where he's gonna put the double sanctum. It's like a new thing. He didn't even used to do that necessarily, but the third farm is actually like perfectly placed to increase the, the size to put the sanctums in his base. So well done. Nature's blessing, Naga coming, no demon hunter this time. Makes sense on this map. Hard to creep a demon hunter, so may as well play more aggressively with the Naga. Once the Keeper reaches that level 3, we have seen how many footmen can die. And we have seen from the humans what an answer to that can be. The double racks, mass footies, and then somehow transitioning into tier 3 for knights at one point. Yeah, but I think Moon has more of an expanding style than uh, than Lola. It's, he will probably recognize when he needs to expand, if at all. I don't, I don't expect Moon to do this build at all that uh, Lola did either with the proxy and Shanta for it, but who knows. It's an early mana pot on the Keeper, by the way. Sends the Naga away for solo experience. That's level 3. Double mana pot. Hello. Delay well, this tier 3 a ton with this. It's not quite buy one, get one free, but they're cheaper than before. So why not? They do have a long cooldown. Of like I, a minute. He knows that there is not many towers, so I think he's just gonna spam trans like crazy and overwhelm him. Are you ready to see like 12 trans? I'm ready, dude. Let's do it. 
Whisk coming in as well, detonating against both AM and Water Elemental. Very nice. Takes out the Elemental right away. And this is a flood of Night Elves right here. Nature rises again. TH needs militia. Yeah, Moon needs to kill that tower. Once he kills that, those trans are gonna reign supreme. Of course, immediately after saying Moon has more of an expanding style, he buys double mana pot and goes for the giant <laughs> all-in. But you know what? It's looking super scary right now for TH. Where are those militia? He's losing quite a lot of footmen already. No militia coming out yet for the defense. Does he have no lumber workers? Yeah, probably not many. But, I mean, he needs them, you're right. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit tricky without them. He might not have checked items. Maybe in his mind, like, the keeper was almost gonna be out of mana and that, that was gonna be it. He's buying time for the towers in the back, but they're getting cancelled. Guard tower would help, but it's too much damage from the archers. Footies are returning the fire. Finally come the militia. Look at the gang. Eight militia coming in. Moon has to kite back. More it's not the closest expo on the map. So once militia get there, they don't have too much time. So TH is going to send them back immediately. Moon's starting to work on the Archmage despite, despite the, the almighty ring being on it. And sold one ring still has another. Tier three coming. So we're going to have the marksmanship transition here on the way. Not a complete all-in. There's going to be a transition here for Moon. But he's doing big damage right here, isn't he? Yeah. Like, he's, he's killing a ton of footmen. It feels like TH is kind of running out of footmen here, which is scary. If he doesn't have the second barracks and you run out of footmen, you just die behind this. Because then there's a ton of vulture. There's still trans to work with. Archmage still being targeted. Does he go for the untangle? There's so many militia. He might get surrounded, Moon. Oh, my God. He sneaks past. The Naga gets out of there. Tower's cancelled again, so it's still only one Arcane at the Expo. But that it's Arcane, arcane. <laughs> TH is holding on to as if it was a sacred heirloom. More trance showing up here. Mind you, he, Moon neglected buying a staff here. He just spent all of his gold on that double mana potion, so he didn't get staff. So it's not like he can staff his second hero or like some of the units and heal them. He does have the fountains in the back, but it's daylight now for the longest time. If he can make this rush last long enough, eventually knights might come in really handy to use the fountain. I think Moon has lost very few archers so far. At the moment, however, only four in this attack. Keeper is trying to distract the human force while more peasants are going down. I think Moon he can't start on the Archmage. Oh, oh, the regent's call, sorry. Two footies also died in the main. Archers there healed up and got the one shot, one kill. Execution. Alchemist now coming in with heal spray just like Lolai did to give a bit of sustain to these archers. Militia is so far. They're almost in the middle of the map. What is this? Turn around, guys. Oh, and he has orb. Yeah. And marksmanship must be coming in right now. And no, no sign of like any tech. He's getting Mountain King second. And no TH. second barracks either. It's not easy to replace these footies. Yeah, he doesn't now, have a, a good economy either. It's not like he can go tier 3 or anything or like double Sanctum. Or... This is normally where Moon should start to go for Mountain Giants with lores. Not quite doing that yet. Relying now on Marksmanship and his heroes, the Orb and more and more and more Treants. Still plenty of footies on the field, but now with triple hero and orb, they're gonna start dying faster. I like that TH is building a bit of a wall at the front. The blacksmith is a super tanky building. That's gonna make it hard for the archers to get in there and shoot down the towers, but the footmen are kind of fighting on their own. The towers are not really shooting right now. And footmen are dying left and right. There's still healing spray to work with. Moon even delayed that a lot to make sure he was gonna be able to hit a lot of these archers. He's not losing anything right now. Moon on 44 supply against 41. Mountain King finally comes in. And the footies are pretty much all gone. Some are coming back from the barracks, but it's not plural double barracks. No, it's only a single. Keeper got 2-4, so with one, that, now he one, finally one, has level two entangle. That makes hero kill always dangerous. There is an invul on TH, but only the single one. And the AM is already hurt. Finally, the ring is getting more useful here. You put that on the Mountain King. But Mountain King level one, yeah, not that scary, especially against a Naga level 3, a Keeper level 4, and in this case, the one Alchemist. Is we making a shop at home? Well, that's a lore, and double Moon Wells is getting ready to go into upkeep here as Moon. Saves the 7th supply for the Mountain Giant, which I'm sure will be coming up next. 
Second can barracks get... now. It's so late, right, for the second racks. But then again, he didn't have that many resources, right? It's not like he could have pumped out a bunch of footies with his bonus 1,000 gold. He was always broke, pretty much. Yeah. And Trance, even though there is one Arcane Tower, he needs Militia here. Moon, such a sick execution. He's always attacking where TH doesn't want him. Like, TH, all he would like here is for a little bit of time to replenish, but Moon's not allowing that to happen. Can the Militia help? Can they finally force away the Snide Elf army? Stormball on the Naga, TP was transferred to her, does she have the time? No! Oh my god, that was so close! That was like a split second away from the Stormball stun being over. Archmage also in trouble, there is no entangle, but lots of damage towards him, heal potion, and suddenly, TH is finding kills! Yeah, he has info as well on the Archmage. Goes for the Keeper, there is no TP! Oh my god! Oh my god. No way! He's Uses the right inbound. Can he get it? There is no more Stormbolt! There is healing spray, can the Keeper survive? Oh my god, no, it's gonna go down. Keeper is going down, suddenly Moon with only the Alchemist left. Out of nowhere, TH finds the hero kill. The TP was transferred, what a crazy punish. And all the momentum shifts suddenly in the human's favor. One hero kill leading to the next, and now we go tier three, and now TH has finally stabilized. Yeah, this is the hold he's needed this entire game. I think maybe he should have just let the Naga die, like he wasn't such a big deal. But transferring the TP and then losing the hero meant that he lost the Keeper as well, went for the instant revive, and now Moon has lost so much momentum, obviously, with this. Yeah. But he made... Oh, oh, look how many Moon wells he made. He's out of 70 supply. Finally, TH is just freely macroing up, getting closer and closer to Tier 3. That was a big experience as well for him, right? Getting those two hero kills, MK suddenly level 2, AM well on level 4. And now Moon returns to creeping for the first time in forever. Yeah, I wonder if he might expand at all, or if he just stays on one base. And also, keep in mind, we're halfway through the nights, so if we come back today, then the fountains, if they don't get cleared before, they're gonna be unusable, because then the creeps are awake. So it might be good for Moon to maybe clear out the fountain on the right side, and then just attack the expo of TH, and try to do a, a lot of damage onto it with the archers and the giants. It's gonna kill that. Are they gonna meet here, perhaps? Doesn't look like Tiad really wants to fight yet. Would like to wait for more knights, wait for more upgrades, wait for the pally, especially. And that Drake <laughs> went on to two hit points and then back to the fountain. Pulls back the keeper. Oh, keeper, what are you doing, bro? Human army is right there. Oh my god. What? Not again. Not again. No. Oh, imagine a sorceress now. Whew. That was a close affair. And he's the one with the staff as well. Okay, TH gets caught. Doesn't seem to mind too much. There's a staff on the keeper, so he can staff out the Naga this time. Oh wow, the Shadow Mail. What a reaction, but there is a dust. Gets one archer, gets two. The single mountain giant so far, not really distracting that much. Stumble level 2 on the Naga. Careful, Moon. Need to stay close, and close enough to make sure you can stuff. Archer still being revealed here by the dust. And he lost so many archers. And TH has Expo running this whole time behind this. Around the Keeper again. Wait a minute, is he dead? Invol transfer, maybe, somehow. TP out from the AM. He's the first one to TP out, but the keeper oh. falls. The hammer hits him on the back of the head. T8 with 2,000 gold as well behind this. Firmly in control now of this game. Yeah, he's beating him with just a 50 supply while banking a lot of gold. And really, that hold around the main base is what made the game for him. After he killed two heroes, you can't let that happen if you're Moon. And I have to question, like, maybe he should have stayed more around the expo than, uh, than going for the main base the way it is. It's always a danger, right? Militia coming in from the main, and they have so much uptime. And then now this is almost like the tilt attack, you know, he's missing his main hero. He instantly bought it. Keeper's almost there to staff out the, the Naga if she's in danger. Wisps coming in as well. Moon is completely all in. He's got the fountain in the back. That's the one good thing. 
the night transition is coming. And those will be way harder to kill than just those paltry footies. And the pally is here. AM's almost five. We have mana pots, heal pots. TH still with more than a thousand gold. Yeah, and even if, he, if Moon reaches Tranquility somehow, there is already a Mountain King ready to interrupt that as well. He's trying to supply lock him. <laughs> He's killing all the farms. Kind of working out. Really sick Sim City again, by the way, by TH. Inner Fire now finally there. Where's coming in? Not quite able to detonate yet. It's kind of weird. He would be burning his own alchemist. A few archers are dying once more. We only have a single knight. Okay, two now coming in. And TH again holds. Inner Fire applied. A lot of his army here. Those were good detonates. He yeah. the water elemental against the heroes. And mana on Moon is still looking pretty good. He might be able to get a lot of kills here now. And you see TH never wastes any time on the giant. He always goes for the backline, kills all of the archers, retreats when he needs to, and tangle on the Mountain King, but he's not even being targeted. He went for the knight instead. That knight was lost. The double orb of venomous damage certainly stacking up. Another holy light, but that was one of the last. Paladin super low mana here. AM is close to 5. Wouldn't mind seeing him going for Aura. Moon in all sorts of trouble here, but he did kill a lot of units here, and the, the bank of TH is now mostly gone. Even though he still got... Oh, he, actually, he got 1400. I think he, he might have cancelled something just now. Plus 2 at damage archers. The, on this map, the gold mines... Don't take forever to mine out necessarily, but for sure, like there's still enough gold for TH to reach 80 supply. For Moon to reach 80 supply without an expand here is super unlikely. So it's gonna he's gonna have to keep on trading, I think. Don't let TH get to a high supply count and then yeah. use the fountains to save everything and then eventually expand with the main tree, like by moving it. Picking up some sticks. Can he threaten this expansion town hall maybe? With only two MGs, rather unlikely, I guess. Yeah, the giants are still a pain to deal with because even though you can kind of like run past, they're still taunting you and stuff the whole time. Yeah. But it's only two. It's not like four where it becomes near impossible. And they're not protecting the archers too well at the moment. The knights move forward, find the connection. Some knights getting entangled. Some might be falling. Pally is in fact out of mana very quickly. Doesn't have a mana potion, so no heal anymore. No holy light. Heal spray from the Alchemist on the other side is looking good. Level 4 for him, level 5 for the Keeper. Big level ups here now for Moon, finding more kills. Also losing quite a bit though, the Naga in trouble again. She died quite a bit this game. Here now she will survive, or will she? In Wolf Force, there was a bash I believe in the middle of all of that. Keeper the getting slow. The Priest still have a ton of on the MK, chasing forward. Nice heal scroll by TH. Keeper in trouble, Stumbled hits him and Keeper is dead! Almost! Oh my god, last second save! Heal scroll first, holds on to the TP, and the invul goes for the AM next. What about him? Can he save that hero? Yes, he can. TP on the first hero, TH keeps his AM alive. Whew, that was close. Yeah, but uh, TH is not losing enough here. He's up to 69 supply. Like, like I said, it should be pretty easy for him to get to 80, and then after that, well, good luck. Like, all the micro in the world is not going to save you. Moon's doing a good job using the fountains, but these fights are not going well enough for him, and it feels like he's kind of running out of time here as TH pulls further and further ahead in supply. And I'm, uh, if he's getting some upgrades as well, this is going to be even worse. Like, those knights are going to become so scary with inner fire. Moon can't afford to keep on sending wisps in too easily either. Yeah, I imagine with how rich TH was for so long, there must be upgrades. Pretty high upgrades on these knights now. Mains run dry. No more income for Moon. The Tree of Eternity has to be moved elsewhere. But TH, of course, is aware of this timing. Ho! Oh! Almost gets the stumbled surround, but there was a staff to save the keeper. With the moon wells in the back, this is the perfect position for moon. Is TH really feeling so confident to fight into all of this? I don't think he should. Yeah, this is like the one way you can throw a game. I mean, he's super far ahead. He might still win, but why would you take the risk? You know the opponent's mine out. You look at your own gold, you see that it's almost gone. You're like, okay, well, he's about to mine out. It's much better to attack on the elf expo and 
Make no mistake about it, Elf absolutely needs to expo here behind this. He cannot keep the tree inside of the main base. You see Moon though, he's trying to force a mistake out of TH. He's moving out, he's entangling some unit, and he's saying like, follow me back to those Moon Wells. And maybe if I can win a fight there, I have a chance, but there's so much army from the human player here. Knight's fighting this around the Keeper again. There is once more a Staff though. Alchemist completely naked, nothing in the inventory. Going for the Alchemist, he might be able to get that kill. Uh, for the Paladin, but he's still getting healed. There's not much damage follow up. The archers are completely exposed and they're getting slaughtered now by these knights. This seems to be the end. Doubling down here on the supply 80 versus 40 only left for the Night Elf. Archers all falling, level ups all over for the MK, for the Paladin. These knights still untouchable. And that's GG. Whew, all right, we got ourselves a series once again. TH ties this best of five up with 1-1, one, one, and we're down to a best of three. Oh boy, did these playoffs start one-sided, but since then, it's marathon time, right? Especially for the Moon games. 2-1 against Colorful, 2-1 against Lin, 3-2 against 1-2-0, and now we're on the way to that uh, state as well. Todd, it almost feels like to me that this Night Elf versus Human is turning into somewhat of an Undead versus Human matchup in a way that their Human is trying to expand, the Night Elf is putting a lot of pressure onto this expansion, and then for the Human it's time to hold on until Tier 3. Do well, you see similarities? Like human against Undead, Human would have to have no chance. <laughs> and like we're not there. <laughs> I actually really like the balance of uh, human against self. Like a lot of elf are complaining, a lot of human are complaining. But if you look at these games, they're like really back and forth. It's rare that in the yeah. matchup you see like the tie turning so many times across a single game. So I'm really a big fan of human against self currently. And uh, yeah, these games have been crazy. I feel like Moon was ahead. If th that town portal had worked yeah. on his Naga, we're looking at a very different game. He moves across the map again. He keeps on pushing onto the expo and maybe he wins. But losing two heroes like this, you can't have that happen when you're on one base against two. Yeah, the crucial mistake, probably the Naga there. Plus the TP. Once again, super impressive how resilient TH is to, to never give up and to stay in this game. And it feels like here in the semifinals, all the players they fight until the very, very, very end. It's so much on the line and, and you just feel how important it is to them. I wonder like strategically moving forward here, there still seems to be a certain story following this matchup. Like in Lola versus Infi and also Moon versus TH. If the human gets the fast expansion, stabilizes, gets to tier three, gets to Knights, let's say 65 supply, they have been winning. They have been winning in every one of those cases, with the exception of the Warden game on Terranas. I think the key in the super late game for Night Elf is to get at least double orb, if not triple orb. Todd, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, that's like saying that whoever does well in the early game has an advantage. I mean, that's true across every matchup and on every map especially uh, from players that play at this level. So the expansion, it comes down to the early game. And in this one, it was TH that did better, I think, after he expanded, because the Wisps were late. By the time that they got there, most of the creeps were already gone on the Expo. We even talked about it. Like, this is one of the harder maps to expand on. So if the Wisps had been there earlier, and Moon had done that, like, he got one of these creeps stolen by a Footman. How yeah. often is that going to happen? Especially against a Keeper, it's so dangerous to even go across the map with a Footman. So that was like, a, I feel like a once kind of thing that just happened. It's crazy that Moon stopped the expansion so effectively on Last Refuge, but then failed so hard on uh, Conceal Hill. The good thing is that we follow the nature of a series. Moon took the lead, then it's TH's map choice. He wins that one, so we move over to map number three, which is Moon's map choice. And when the Keeper was rising, Moon was the one on this map to abuse the Keeper and the Creep route. So... A normal choice for Moon to pick this map for his playstyle, Remo? 
Yeah, it's a map that favors Keeper very well. If the human happens to be playing one base, you can creep level three really creep uh, really quickly with a Keeper. And if he's, expa if he's expanding, the human is, then you can harass it very well, moving across the map quickly with level two, and even coming in with detonates can lead to a lot of damage on the human side. What I'm wondering is, is, is Warden completely out of the question here now? On AZ, I do kind of feel so. Yeah. Uh, to back up this map choice by a couple of statistics, this is the second best map of Moon versus Human with a 66% win rate, the best being Twisted. And for TH, that's one of, it is actually his worst map with only 52%. That is uh, way below average for him. Yeah. And it can be a really tough map to expand on if there is two Wisps coming to you. But can you afford to always prepare two wisps? Like if you get it wrong and then the human plays on one base and then, for example, find those wisps, you could be in trouble yourself. So it's really about getting the build order right, you know, finding some sort of advantage here and there. A lot of humans, they've still been expanding on the on this map. So it's yeah. for Moon to yeah. probably like get ready as much as possible in the case there is an expand, make sure it doesn't happen. And then if it's one base against one base, it's really anybody's game, I think. Yeah, if, those, if this was Infi playing now, I'd say he's definitely going to go Fast Expo. He's, he plays Live or Die by the Fast Expansion. But we saw TH's willingness to play one base tech on LR already. We in, initially intended to Fast Expand, but then said, no, uh, I guess we'd rather go with tech now. That, of course, didn't lead to a victory. Maybe that, again, reinforces more the idea of Fast Expansion, which seems to be the best way to play this. Fast Expand, hold on, and survive till the late game. And TH held on against this crazy pressure with only one barracks. He didn't even need two barracks. How crazy is that? But a lot came down to that Stormbolt hero kill, which I would love to have a timer on that. How many milliseconds were left on that stun? Because it yeah. must have been so, so, so close. Yeah, it felt like the stun should have been over already, but sometimes, you know, these tiny little moments when you're stunned feel like an eternity. Moon this year against Human, by the way, 10 to 3. That is pretty damn good stats, as he has across the board. TH versus Night Elf is only 5 to 5. Law Lyot there, uh, giving 4 defeats to him. If you take out Law Lyot, then it's 5 to 1, but he didn't meet Moon. And if you take out Law Lyot, then he didn't meet with the top Night Elf, so whatever. Stats are stats. <sighs> Feels good. <laughs> stats are stats. Stats are stats. Neo yeah? 2020. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, man. It's so yeah. cool that, that we have this, this legendary encounter here that we had at WCG 2013, at WCG 2019. This is a match that really follows us through this third era of competitive Warcraft 3. And now third era, third game. It is Moon versus TH. Who's going to take the lead in this series? Remo and Todd, take it away. Moon is shaking his head. What's he disappointed with? Was it just that hero loss or was it more? Yeah, you know, actually what I'm really curious about is how set are they on the strategy that they are going to do here in this game? Because having played this game at a decent level and in like a lot of tournaments, including as this guy sometimes, I can tell you that sometimes you have a very hard time picking your build. Like in this case, for example, I think for Moon it's pretty clear cut, you know, like Keeper, Creep a little bit, then Harass. But for TH, the big question is, do you try to expand or do you not try to expand? And sometimes it's like a coin flip. Up until the last second in your head, you're like, I'm expanding, I'm not expanding, I'm expanding, I'm not expanding. So it's it's very, very hard to pick, but you do have to pick by the time you've, you're done with a lab creeping. Yeah. Or even skip the lab, right? That was what we saw earlier yeah. from Infi, going for the instant expo creep. And that seems to be working out well kind of against the keeper timing because keeper of course wants to creep the first camps first two camps at the start get the items then come in for the harass and if you go for the instant expo maybe you can clear that before the keeper says hello so yeah, it's for him to scout well enough to make sure he knows early what's going on it's not always easy to scout though with wisp you know like there's the archmage in the area chasing them away killing them you can use Revelation, but then also the opponent will know that you've scouted like what they are doing. They can still change the plan. And items can be still very important here on this map. We saw like... Actually, he just won with double ring last game, right? He did. That's insane. TH is a god. 
He did the impossible. Can he do it again? Will he find rings again? We start off with two items here at the starting creep. Both will be going for the lamp plus the green for the fast level two. Well, at least Moonwell. For TH, as we said, it could be an instant expo creep. And it's so important for this wisp right here to scout out against that. There should be another wisp heading north for the detonate possibility. Yeah, I think it's important to scout early to see if, like we talked about, TH goes for the expo directly. And like for TH, it's an interesting mind game because, like we talked about, Infi did it earlier against Low Lights. Obviously, everybody was watching that game. So Moon is, you know that he's going to be getting ready for that if it happens. And I see a footman moving out on the map. Actually, no. Yeah, no, he's on the other side of the map. So yeah, he's just going to do a lab here to start with. Moon finds a claw. Very good drop. He still lasted again with the footy. Uh, this time, apparently not. He doesn't know if it's entangled, but he's still staying around. Because the, the keeper has full mana. I like that Moon kind of hides that. But now he's level 2. That's a dead footy. And he's close to the Moon Wells. That's actually big. When you get entangled away from your base, then the keeper has to go all the way back. And then click on the Moon Wells. Now he's right next to them. He might not even need a second entangle. Oh, that's amazing for Moon. That's the claws right there. Got him. Got him. TH takes his time here to creep level 2. Gets an arcane. And... Creep's being woken up early. Does that change something? Yeah, I think he was trying to make the footman get ensnared. Oh, yeah. He almost, he almost helped him. Okay, no, he does get ensnared. I was like, imagine if he pulled it for him. <laughs> So technically, the mud golems should still be slowing, and maybe there will be ensnares thrown around. Moon is right oh, behind. Is he sent yeah. He's fully ready for this. Oh my god, he's going to be a disaster for oh, TH potential. That detonate! That detonate gets both elementals. Oh my god. Jeez Louise. All right, it's LR all over again, boys. Abort, abort. Time for Plan B. Moon fully expected this expansion attempt. TH again has to abort. He's stacking already in his main base. If that footman goes down, this keeper is getting dangerously close to level 3. It's going to be very easy for him to get it. He can get maybe a smaller range camp, maybe the small murlocs in front of his base. And level 3 this early on this map against a human that just stacked, that calls for some entangled domination. And there's not going to be any safe word to help TH. Night Elves out there. Write down that trick. When the footy wants to pull, wake up the creeps with the wisp. Building a shop or something. And then suddenly ensnares fly and the creeps use their spells and disaster strikes. This is the kind of thing that when they try it though, they're gonna pull the camp out for the human. And he's then gonna creep it easily. <laughs> uh, gotta try it though. Gotta try to look like Moon at least. So some foot is going down here. Keeper not creeping level 3 first. Wants oh, to slow completed. down this LM. You get to deny? Ooh, huge actually. Because the keeper stays on 2.5. You really want to delay that level 3 as much as possible. But that goes both ways. Archers on one side, keeper on the other. This is really cool. Hard for the footies to find the proper connection. Keeper still has plenty of mana. He might be able to claim these middle camps. It's kind of oh. tricky actually for Tish to even pick whether he goes defense. Okay, no, he did go defense. But then the blacksmith will be delayed, like, and I guess you don't go rifles at all. And if you're Moon, like, he's, he's doing well enough in this game that with his second hero, he's going to be in good shape. Oh, there is no farm at the lab. Yeah. So he couldn't scan. This archer movement and shadow meld and just everything. Oh, he saves the footy. That's nice. But yeah, how are you going to heal him up now? By two regions? Did he save goals? him? Oof. I almost went down. But he was ready with the deny. Did you see that? He was waiting till the last yeah. second. I would like to see Moon maybe expand this time. Like earlier. Not necessarily like on tier 2, but once he has uh, improved bows and he's got like some tier 3 going and he's getting close to marksmanship, then maybe expand this time around. But he's, since he's making archers all the time, he can't really send the Ancient of War. That's the thing. But if he has a uh, trance level 2, which is usually what you go for here, Early enough, you can maybe creep it. Demon Hunter second again. Nice thing about these claws camps is whatever you find, everything is good for the Demon Hunter. 
So that's going to be a nice way to support him with the ring, for example, but also with circlet, claws, gloves, whatever it may be. And that's double claws. And a ring. Good items for Moon. Out of mana now, but I think he didn't lose a single archer this whole early game, did he? No. He saved everything. And TH has been losing a decent amount of footies. He, oh my god, that's, he went straight into tier 3. But Demon's already there, so if there is a mountain king, that kind of gives an advantage to Moon ever so slightly. Yeah, on LR, the Demon Hunter crept up really heavily quickly to get to level 3 in no time. Found great items. It's gonna be a little bit harder here. Can't use the Ancient of War creeping so well. The map is not very big, not many camps to begin with. He's still gonna open with level 2. And did he go evasion first? Oh, he soaks up experience here with the Keeper. That doesn't seem like that was the right play. Gets uh, mana potion. Archimage needs to be careful. There's a staff, so if he gets entangled, he's just gonna staff out of there immediately. And Mountain King went for pretty safe camps. First the shop, now the Murlocs near his base, and I'm guessing the expansion will be up next. And this time, I think TH wants to rush for Master Priest, Knights, Paladin third, and his tier 3 was incredibly fast. I mean, I assume Moon went for tier 3 pretty quickly also. He queued a Sorceress, interestingly. And we saw the tier 3 mass knights work out very well on two base. How much harder is that to play in a one base, one base game? I think it's okay, like, because you don't get anything really expensive on tier 2. You know, you're just getting, like, casters and footmen, which are pretty cheap. So it's very easy, once you reach tier 3, to start, like, a knight and paladin quite immediately. Especially because now he's creeping a ton. But then so is moon. So we're seeing a, definitely a more passive game here in the mid-game on Amazonia. Both moving towards the top left Merc camp. For Moon, Marksmanship is going to finish in a second. He already has the orb. He is getting good benefit from his tier 3 already, while TH still has to wait. Waiting for the pally, waiting for the knights, waiting for the upgrades. And is he getting a second soul stress? This is really weird. Against this army. Yeah, yes, stuff. It's not gonna do anything. I guess they're both gonna creep the Mer camp on each side. Interestingly, I think Moon could creep probably uh, one of the Reds' granite golems easier than uh, TH, because TH is most melee army and he's not playing rifles at all here. But he didn't make shop, so you can get stuff I think for a little bit. What are these big items? Rune Bracers again for the Demon Hunter. Woo! He's gonna be thankful for this. MK with the Sobi. Against the mana burn. Honestly, this might not do very much. Well, he queued Sorceress training. You see that? I was really w surprised that actually Master? he made a Sorceress at all against this army, but he wants to get Invis, I think, on the MK. Stormbolt, ah. Invis. Oh, yeah, yeah, good point, good point. We didn't see that at all on LR. Really? He's gonna creep that? How is he gonna kill that? <laughs> Only with a few footies. Moon is coming for the creep jack from around the corner. Oh my god, did the damage? Slow on yeah. the demon hunter. Sorcerer's here. If I was mad with the PS. <laughs> it's disaster. Oh my god. Four archers in a zeppelin. Is he stuck inside? Threatening a drop. Is he actually stuck inside of his base? Um, that looks like a wall off, yeah. You can get a zap, I guess. Moon doesn't know though. I mean, if Moon knew, he would have pulled the uh, golems already and started it. 47 supply for Moon, 40 for TH. He went clap level 2, by the way. That's why he went in this. There is no bash this time. He wants to get inside of those archers and he wants to kill them. And there is no... Because he's playing Demon Hunter second, there is no alchemist with healing spray. But does but, it have mana burn? Yeah, the he has the zap. crucial. He has the zap after that. If he knows where the MK is or around it. But he has nothing to scan and no dust. Cloak for the Demon Hunter. These Demon items, again, amazing. 
Oh, he has sentry wards. Moon has sentry wards. If he catches the Mountain King in this somewhere with those, that would be amazing for him if he can open up with the mana burn. So we're pretty much sitting at 50 supply. Time for more upgrades. Moon has tons of lumber. TH really doesn't. And if Moon claims both red camps, big experience for him. Should be level 4 demon. He is, though, slot starved, as he's only playing dual hero. Should certainly get rid of these gauntlets, I suppose. Yeah, 58 supply. It looks like Moon doesn't like to wait too much before breaking upkeep. He knows, in particular, he after getting one of the red, if he breaks the upkeep early and has a bigger army, that means that a lot of the time he can get the second one and then yeah. just be super far ahead. So I like the choice. It's basically the only objective left on the map, really. Worth to go into upkeep for that. And Moon bring two wisps again. He's so smart, like, honestly. I feel like so many elves here, they will forget about this. Like, you can execute everything perfect the whole game, but if you make that one mistake of not bringing the wisps, that can change the, the entire game for you. And in this case, there is a scroll of the beast he has to worry about, which is very scary, obviously, on this uh, human army. Two MGs out already. Moon could go for more. But just spend his money on something else, maybe more upgrades. Expansion. Ah, that's where it's going. All right. He sees him. Sentry Word is not there, so the Mountain King could open up with a big clap here. Yeah, he's trying to get inside of those archers. Drops the Sentry Word. Oh, he almost... He gets the Entangle and he gets the Mana Burn. That's the perfect engagement here for Moon. Wisp coming in. He's going to remove a lot of this inner fire. And immediately TH knows he has to run. There's triple Wisp inside of that army. Moon with a magnificent engagement. MK got off a single Storm Bolt that was only on the Demon Hunter. Didn't really do much thanks to those Rune Brazer and the fact that the Storm Bolt is only level 1. Archer's now in a bad position though. This is easy for them to be engaged on, but the Zeppelin by Moon. How smart is the Zeppelin also? There's no rifles. Yeah. There's barely any, any anti-air. And the Flame Machine died, so now you can't even see the sentry yeah. and remove it. It could scan wow. eventually, but there's going to be 50 gold. Moon's going to be standing there eventually and... Moon with an incredible game three here. Looking Seriously. to take the lead. Seriously, Moon, what the hell? What a game. It almost felt as if he knew that maybe something was fishy. I mean, he knows that there is Soltresses, so he's like, oh, maybe you have Invis. Drops the sentry ward yeah. perfectly. Seriously. And gets... that, that game sense to have the one sentry that he has in the perfect spot at the perfect time. Yeah. Hot and man. the triple wisp. Without the triple wisp, the Mountain King still has a decent amount of mana to start clapping away. But TH muscled up to high supply now as well. 59 for him. Moon at 63. Pretty close. In with MK again. And down here, there's no sentries. Revelation, maybe? If he can anticipate that the MK is there and it shouldn't be too hard, I think Revelation would be huge to open up again with a mana burn because the sentry word was like, one of them was on the right side. He might even have expired and the other one is at the top. You know what? It's time for part and third for Owl. Let's do it. <laughs> That wouldn't be too bad, actually, considering how many archers he had as well, like when he gets uh, true shots. Yeah. If he has the gold, it's actually good, but it's, of course, very expensive. And TH very tentative here. He's... I thought he was only sense mining, but no, he's looking to set up that expo. Funny he made a farm on his own expo. MG's now getting the other upgrade as well, so they're going to have... Resistant and hardened skin. And nature's blessing starting as well. So he wants the strands to be a little bit tankier. If you can make sure you kill a lot of these priests, and I think they're the units you should go for. The tricky part, like the, the big dance in this composition, is the archers trying to trying to go for the human casters and the knights trying to go for the archers. And it's yeah. very hard to control both ways, and then you need to mind every one of your heroes as well. Yeah, hard to execute. They might in just play very uh, passive from there, actually, as I say that, of course. TH oh. gets in position to try and start clapping. Keeper kind of in the middle of everything here. Might get stone bolted. Demon Hunter is slowed. Horrible position for Moon. Didn't get any mana burns out until now. Finally, the MK is now dry and the Demon Hunter is ultra surrounded. My god. But he pops the in and with that, he's going to hold his ground. 
Some of the priests going down, but the knights, they do get past the MGs and do find their way towards the archers. More and more are going down. Almost even in supply. It's a lot of knights. Oh my god. TH now of mana, though. Moon, when he has expo and when he's rich, there is a unit that he loves. It's called the Chimps. So I'm very curious to see if he might drop one or two roots there eventually. But right now the game feels that like it's a little too hectic for him to go for that. You know, imagine you go for that and then just before they come out, you get attacked and you die. That could be dangerous. But I think Moon fully knows that he got his expansion earlier. And he has slightly more economy. He's already on 75 supply here, looking to fight. Demon Hunter comes in, big mana burn on the Archmage. Lots of those knights are already low. Him is again on the Mountain King, throws the Storm Bolt, but that one again is only level 1, doesn't do that much. The Knights into the back, Archers being spread everywhere. Great kiting by Moon, trying to minimize the damage he's going to be taking. Some Archers will be going down, but also returning a lot of damage toward these Knights. On the left side, we see one going down, that's almost level 4 on the Demon Hunter. Keeper also getting closer to 5, another Knight stranded over there. And that's the thing, when they're so spread out, suddenly Entangle becomes crazy good again. And the micro from both players is absolutely absurd here. Moon pulled back every archer that was about to be attacked by knights. And like you said, those that were isolated, he went for the entangle on. He's going to send Trance into the expo to kill peasants. He knows that TH is now kind of locked away from that expansion. Lots of knights going low. Moon still going strong here. Demon on level 4. Moon's been doing such a great job mana burning. He's actually out of mana himself on the Demon Hunter. And maybe with that, these heroes can find more use again. Going on the AM now, he doesn't have a TP and the AM just falls. I didn't even realize. No TP to protect the first hero. That's TH dropping down to 51 supply. And Moon on the chase now with a level 5 keeper. He popped the mana potion. He's got much more entangle to use now with the increased range as well. With a level 3 entangle. Goes for the pally. That one's dead as well. AM's back from the tavern. That was expensive. But looking for more kills. Keeper is on the chase. He's sharking around. Looking to take out more targets. Or is he? Goes north instead, perhaps prioritizing the expansion. Water team is here as well, but the keeper is slowed down at least for a little bit. But TH on the ropes. Yeah, he's still hanging in there here. Catches a Dryads on its own. Mountain King is always a scary hero here to have on level 3. Obviously, with Stormbolt, you can kill heroes very quickly. There is an Arcane Tower on the expo. Moon. I think he realizes that TH is struggling enough here to try and land some more peasant kills. Might have to TP at the end of it. Yeah, TH, uh, Moon's gonna have to TP out here at some point. Question is how much damage can he do until then? The Cloak of Flames, the Demon Hunter killing so many peasants. Again, Moon doing as much as he can in the timing window that he's got. Don't tell me you can kill this Town Hall. No. no. <laughs> If you had like two more giants, maybe. Oh, he forgot Sarchers. Oh my god. Ooh, that's quite that's a few going down. Almost there. And MK close to four. Okay. Moon lost a lot. He's down to only 60. 58 to be precise. Yeah. That was an overextension here. I think he stayed a little too long. Especially losing the archers, like now it's mostly a giant army that is good. Moon is going into bears as well. Adept training, I believe, is coming right now. Keeper can keep on summoning treants, send them up north. Be annoying. The red camp is still left. Would be valuable experience and item for both these players. Yeah, the problem for TH is that if he moves across the map and fights near Moon's Expo, there is an easier access to Wisps for Moon, which are super important, because if they remove the mana from heroes and priests, then the Keeper has a lot of potential with the Entangles and Treants to really uh, do well in those fights. All right, we reset. Both players have a moment to breathe here. Oh, he made a bear for Roar. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to go into more or just like one or two for this uh, versatility. Hey, it could be good because even though there is clap, you get only so many claps against the Demon Hunter. And again, like that's, yeah. that invis is what is TH reaction to the Demon Hunter second. He's saying, oh, you want to burn me? Well, you can't burn me if I'm invisible. So Moon you got kind of fortunate with the sentry words and he's got a good fight previously, but... He doesn't have sentry words anymore. 
and it's very hard to like dust exactly as you need to as you need to to catch that mountain king every time mains are now expired th still slowly climbing up to 80 moon already at 80 no chims no potum just archers and mg even a few dryads now being sprinkled in for just the slow very valuable yeah moon is much stronger on this side of the map with moon wells being there with wisp being close and so that's why TH doesn't really dare to even go to the center. But if Moon pulls that red, I think TH has to contest. There's a couple items you really can't let a Night Elf get. Yeah, let's say Moon gets like Unholy Aura. That would be amazing for him. Yeah. And he's playing with the thought. Maybe he wants to set up a fake. MG's picking up sticks. Increasing their range. That means the... Bears will naturally be a bit more exposed in the front line. Oh, he brought... Yeah, I think Moon's gonna go for it because he, always, he already has 80-80. And he has all of these extra wisps from the main base that don't need to mine anymore. So he's like, sure. I might as well use them for the fights. Oh my god, if he connects big time here, this could be huge. MK comes out of Inmuth with the Stormbolt clap. Not that much damage, honestly. Keeper took a bit of it, but he's getting back to the safety of the back line. More teams, though, in the back, very well protected. They can take out the Dryads very quick. Good dancing by Moon so far. Knights versus Bears, what's going to be better? Demon taking out the Dryads and the MK as well. Mountain King, no way to save him. Staff at the very last second, Jesus Christ. But he's out of this fight for the longest time. Moon the priests have no mana. The priests lost all of their mana. Entangled is going to do so well. Treants could come into play as well. Demon Hunter taking damage. There is obviously the Staff on the Keeper. And he has an invuln as well, but the priest not having mana. And keep in mind, this is not a game where Archmage is level 5 with Brilliance level 3. He's only level 4 here. Goes for the Archmage. He has the okay, staff. Focus. Oh Too much damage. Takes him out with the burn. The AM hits the deck. And that might be the game right there. Moon now with a 20 supply lead. On the chase, everything is hurt. Everything's out of mana. This Keeper Demon, just like on LR, seemed to be doing it again. Oh my god, the Wisps really making the game here for Moon. I think TH had to run away, he had to clap the Wisp and take them out with just the MK. Because if you lose all of your mana on all of your priests and some of your heroes like this, you just cannot win that fight anymore. And he learned that the hard way here. I had to go back. Mountain King, that was tough, so he cannot even move right now. He's being attacked and it's gonna go down, Remo. Absolutely. That means only the Pally is left, only around 50 supply. That is not winnable. GG! And Moon takes the 2-1 lead and match points. Oh my god, guys. This is unbelievable, man. There must be a footpath between these two players because it's so much back and forth. 2-1 for Moon, his map, his win. And now it's time for TH to come back. Pretty much like the first two games, right? There's no clear lead. There's always a small lead, but then the other player comes back. And this, of course comes down a lot to how well you play but also this must be so draining mentally Todd when you're in a series like this of course uh, it, Oops, not just that it can be very irritating as well right you try to go for the expo like the opponent is just so prepared with the wisps it goes really bad from the get go and then after that you're forced already out of your comfort zone out of your game plan that you had of expanding and then moon just Kind of always in the lead, obviously it was back and forth with the fights, like TH did a great job hanging in there, going for the archers, like the micro boat players, it's just so incredible in those fights, I'm, I'm amazed by everything that they do. And we don't even see too many Dryads by Moon yet, highlights of the game here, and I feel when Moon's detonates are on point, he wins the fight, so Remo, is that the key to the late game fights? It seems so, it's all about mana burn, interestingly, not just with the... Uh, not just with the detonates, but also with the Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter, a hero who was almost forgotten in this matchup, especially his first hero looks so weak, but here in Moon's hands, in the second hero slot, suddenly looks so good once he gets the items and the levels. And we, I mean, this has kind of a rich history now in WGL, right? It was the Keeper patch 1.30, where we saw Law Light abusing the Wisp detonate like crazy, making a big difference there already. And they still do. Yeah, it feels like this this separates the good players uh, from from the absolute greats that they always have these wisps there. 
We saw it from Lawlight as well, super excessively. And yeah, if your Archmage isn't level 5, it's gonna be really, really hard to deal with it. So, where do we go now? What's TH's map pick? Um, we saw it earlier. What yeah, we'll, we'll see it in a bit, I guess. <sighs> These final four definitely do not disappoint. And this time it felt like there was no big mistake like there was with the Naga kill. This was just straight up. Usually we see, like, on this map, if we see this in Europe with this matchup, we see a lot of uh, Blood Mage tier 2... Uh, rifle pushes, but against the Keeper, Todd, is that completely out of the equation? Yeah, it feels like it's not really the flavor anymore. Like, a, a lot of people know how to play very well against it as well. So, the, the maps that we have left, by the way, we have Echo Isle and... What Northern? Else? Yeah, Northern. Northern. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So, I guess we're going to be seeing some more Keeper action. And it seems like it's all about how well can you fast expand. Yeah. Right now, he's like, decides how well the human's gonna do. And on Echo Isle, it's not too hard. Like we saw in Fee do very well, even with Mountain King first on Echo Isle, which actually somewhat surprised me in that epic game versus Low Light. On Northern Isle, maybe sometimes a little bit trickier. And also, actually, there's potential on Northern Isle that maybe we see a Warden if Moon thinks that there's gonna be a, maybe a delayed expand, but maybe even against a straight expand, it can work as well. So just game planning right now is like going to be off the chart for both players. There is no room left for TH. When he was down yesterday against uh, Focus, and he was Focus was on match one. I think it was two one. TH played a blood match first build. Oh yeah, yeah. I so saw I you in chat. You were, we were quite amazed, weren't you? <laughs> uh, I was shocked, honestly. Even more so that he won as well. That was absolutely amazing indeed. This is. Uh... Echo Isles now, same second map pick as Infi had, and TH, Moon, this map, does that bring back some memories from WCG? Yeah, that was a crazy game, which ended... I mean, out of all things, it, I think it ended on the bottom right-hand side of the map, yes. near the turtle spot as well, where like yeah. it was just like... Yeah. So many clutches in a row. Like, still one of the most exciting games I've seen to this day, especially with the audience there. If we can recreate this magic at least a little bit, that would be awesome. But of course, since then a lot of stuff has changed, I don't think we're going to see a panda second. But with these guys, who knows? Do you remember what were the clutches? It was like uh, Tranquility and like... <laughs> Earth Storm and Fire was like yeah. 20 things happened in, I guess, three seconds or so. I, there was so much going on in that bottom right. It was one of the greatest moments that we had last year for sure. And now it's match points for Moon. Is that his third WGL Grand Final? So far it was only against Westerners, against Foggy, and then against Happy. Could be against yeah. Chinese now, as Infi is waiting. I think Echo Isle favor TH more, in my opinion, because you got access to mercenaries very early if you want to buy the Forest Roll Shadow Priests. And then it's an easy expand. So yeah. maybe those moon mix in something different because of that, like I said, maybe a Walden. It's going to be super interesting to see how, what he plans here. Yeah, the expansion will probably be fast, but also a little delayed due to that mercenary camp. Maybe moon has something prepared for that timing as well. But you can just pull it, right? You don't have True. to creep it. You can just pull the camp and buy the Forest Roll Shadow Priest. True. It's so interesting to see like what these guys, what conclusions they come to, how they game plan knowing what the opponent knows and what they can do. Yeah. Yeah, if you do play Warden and you get off to a really good start, if you get to level 5 quickly, you can abuse the human like crazy with there being no labs, being no zeppelins to save the peasants, and there's no third base option for the human. But even Lawliot didn't play the Warden here earlier. She's not as easy to just completely steamroll out of control in the creep game as it is on Terranus, where you can just go from 3 to 5 in seemingly no time. Yeah. And part of it is that if you play Walden, ideally you want to create the mercenary camp first, but all of these humans, we saw Infi do it, they send a peasant across the map immediately to pull the creeps yeah. to attack the Ancient of War. And if the Ancient of War is not there, they build a farm that can block a building going up there. So they're really prepared for that. And how do you counter that if you're Night Elf? It's really tough. Technically, you could get an Ancient of War maybe near the Expo and creep it, but 
Maybe it wouldn't be as good if you do the top camp, then also that's not as good. With that peasant scout, by the way, immediately at the start, how expensive does that turn out to be for your economy? As of course that peasant isn't mining any resources. Yeah, it's it's kind of expensive, but it's not the end of the world in that like, you prefer having that happen than letting a warden creep that mercenary camp, basically. <laughs> and then finding mana pendants. And then you eliminated of from the uh, ESL Open Cup two weeks in a row. If you're <laughs> <mean>. <laughs> There's two players that found the mana pendant in the best of one. But at least he got nerfed a little bit now, that mana pendant. Okay. Can these players be nerfed? It is match points for Moon. He's one map away of being the first Warcraft 3 player to ever break $600,000 in tournament income. TH wants to prevent that, just as his brother Infi wants to carry this into game five. It's gonna be difficult, but he definitely has the skills to do it. Moon, TH, Remo and Todd. Boys, take it away. Moon with match point. One step away. Step away. Moon versus Infi in the final. Seems palpably close. Mountain King first, perhaps. I don't know. Like, Infi went for it, made it look very good. Like, one of the best possible things that you could do, which is trying to cheese it, was thrown at him, and he somehow held in this epic game against Lola at N1. Does so TH try the same, or does he go for the safer Archmage? How crazy was it, by the way, earlier that he held that? MK that was... out of mana for like three minutes. Just with I was, sure, I was sure he was dead, especially because he was sending so many militia. He had like no wood, no tech. I'm like, all right, this is over. But nope. In we go. Echo Isles. Just like earlier, the Night Elves spawning on the left. This time it is Moon with the 2 1 lead. TH, what's he gonna do? Everyone's expecting the Keeper here. Is that a reason now to surprise everybody and go for the Warden? TH yeah. is going for the militia creep here, or militia scout, rather, right away. Won't find anything there as the Night Elves mostly play the safe creep nowadays. Yeah, and TH, the big question is going to be Mountain King or Archmage. His altar is towards the bottom. So he might just go for a straight mercenary camp. TH has been doing some greedy creeps in multiple matchups, like against Orc. He opens with a very quick arcane tower and creeps a big camp to open with level 2 so that he can get level 3 and then even then his tech is delayed he kills the orc buildings on tier 2 so then he delays him himself so he's definitely playing a little bit unconventional in that already against orc might try to adapt that a little bit to facing a night elf here like he i'm sure he's anticipating keeper to creep that camp at the top and then to come to his main base so it would make sense to get an arcane tower but the question is does he open with the mercenary camp very quickly so, you think an instant expansion is out of the question? Against Keeper, I don't think it's very good if the Night Elf goes for like Mass Tier 1. It's really like hit or miss you and uh, it's match play. point. But then again, like I said, it, yeah. this guy tried freaking Blood Mage first yesterday when he was like <laughs> potentially about to lose and then he won, then he won the series. So, I guess also with him going for an early Arcane Tower, he doesn't really have the Lumber to support an instant expo. Yeah, yeah. So I guess he has to go for the Merc Camp first. All right, that should be a fast level two then for the AM and some mercenary support. If you know there is a Keeper like almost, like, let's say like 95% of the time here, it's very smart to grab that Forest Troll Shadow Priest early with or without creeping the Merc Camp, but with creeping it even better because you can get away with it here in this case. Ooh, Lightning Shield on the, one of the creep. Actually, so those units are gonna take a lot of damage there. Oh my God. That was really bad. Yeah, two of those peasants, very hurt already. That's crucial experience for this keeper, by the way. For a second, I wondered did he last hit deny one of the creeps as he was on 1.4, but no. Moon got it all, got 1.7, and now threatens the main, but the arcane timing is good. Almost finished already. Actually, yeah, it's, it's kind of awkward, like, economy-wise for TH, because he sent that peasant across the map, so he lost a ton of resources, he then he had to go for the Arcane Tower, so he lost more resources doing that. So it's a little bit weird, like ideally, if you knew that the opponent is creeping the top camp and not going for the mercenary camp, you wouldn't even want to send a peasant across the map, but now he couldn't be sure. So he played it safe, sent that, he's gonna send the injured peasants on the goal here. And having that Forest World Shadow Priest like in the start of the game, like I said, is amazing. He can just do the small green camp now, and then go for the expo. 
The question is, what is Moon gonna do about it? It looks like Tears is playing ultra safe. He's going for the scout across the map, losing resources there. He's going for the tower, losing resources there. He's going for the merc camp to get the mercs to be safe against the keeper oh, better. Oh, does, does he Close. get it? Close. He's going for a berserker as well. That's more resources out of him. But at least he kept his peasant economy pretty healthy. Barely of those went down. But Moon is going to be tier 2 here real soon. Ooh, big detonate gives him level 2 here. And the priest is not close here. The yeah, timing. he's going to end up the berserker. The timing on those wisps also. Perfect. I'm not sure if he has the damage to kill this berserker though. Yeah, I think he does. Militia is late. What's going on with this? Average respon response time when you call 911 apparently uh, not quick enough. Damn, dude. The archer is still hiding in Shadow Melt. Two footies here, super hurt, ex escape towards the top right. Keeper has one spell left to use. Trigans are entangled. Archimedes is 2.8 here, so it's actually hard to pick. Like what to target? You can't risk losing units there. There it is, gets level 3 here with ease. And not many peasants have died here. I feel like this is very good for TH the way this has gone so far. He could block the expansion with the Invis archers. If he spreads them all out. <laughs> Is that what he's doing? No, yeah, he's gonna have to TP out here. Okay. He's taking too much damage. Okay, this was not a super good start, but Keeper is already 2.6. And he did kill the Forest Roll Shadow Priest, so I mean, obviously, TH can buy one more, but then if that one goes, Entangled's still gonna be really good. Trance as well. Free Wisps? No. Is he gonna do the Lolite? It's not a far forward shot, but it's a shot defensively in the base. Second hero time. This certainly smells like Naga. Yeah, it is. And you know, this is very unfortunate spawns, by the way. Uh, it was also mentioned in an interview by Infi. If TH was bottom left, you could actually make Enchant of Wars near the expo for the attack then. But in the bottom right, you can't do that. They are too close to the tunnel. They would just get to get taken out instantly. That's why Lola had went for the main base. Yeah, he's getting Nature's Blessing. He's going to do the Enchant of Wars, I think. Keep we're gonna get staff. Yep. Still far away from three, but now with these archers and the naga, kills could come in pretty quick. Th needs defend. Okay, trance come in before he gets level three here. He's gonna detonate on the water elemental. He's trying to rush that level three here. He needs to kill a few units right now. Archer is taking a lot of damage. Great kiting by Moon. Yeah, a lot of low hit point units escaping here, but the naga is taking a lot of damage. That footman is at level 3, probably not quite, yeah. He's very close though on the keeper. Dude, those, those two wisps again. Hitting the water elemental, hitting the AM and the shadow priest. Beautiful connections. That tower should be easy to cancel. Yeah. So he didn't want to go for the Ancient of War. He's just kind of getting a ton of archers. I thought he might dare make the Ancient of War like on the human island down there, but not quite. Oh, the footy getting killed, one in the main, and also the Shadow Priest, that's level 3 now for the Keeper, hello! Level 2 Entangle, or Treants! In before he goes for Thorn's Aura, that would be quite the thing. AM, tanks a bit of damage here as well, lots of units under threat, of course these archers, good damage output, but once they get attacked, they also suffer from that significantly. Somehow Moon has managed not to lose a single archer yet, which is completely insane. No, I lost okay. one in his base, yeah, I just one in Okay. Ooh, that's staff. I wonder if TH even teched, because he had to send Militia pretty early here. Like, obviously, he needed that right now. He was, like, in real danger. If he teched, I think he's fine. Oh, he hasn't teched! Oh, my God. He's tech. He's so late. What's his lumber looking like? Ah. Uh, 150. Losing a little bit more. No lumber income at the expansion. At the main, it was severely... Stopped as well with a militia call. And tier 3 is coming by Moon. Already 30% done. And that's going to be a scary prospect with how delayed the tech of TH is. And it looks like he might want to just keep on pushing the expo. He's bringing more wisps to remove the water elementals. Brings a mana potion as well. He has one more clarity available on the uh, Naga. And you can buy all the mercenaries in the world here if you're TH. It's still going to be extremely hard to deal with those 
trance with nature's blessing, so extra armor. He doesn't have defend yet. Oh my god. It's only halfway through then. So late. That second barracks missing really seemingly painful again this game. Before T8 was able to hold, survive until tier 3, but my golly, is that far away in this game. So many trans here, the Arcane Tower doing what it can, but Moon always doing a good job staying outside of the range or moving back out of it. And these trans, they are going so strong. <laughs> with Nature's Blessing, they have so much armor here to work with. Archer still being pulled back and saved. Moon's Micro in full display here. And the Mud Golem didn't get too many slows out on the Archer, so hard to get the kills. But okay, Militia come in, help with the defense. This will be cleaned up. But... Once again, this cost a lot for TH. Did he finally start the tech? I think he may have. Yeah, he must have. If he hasn't, he might as well leave the game. <laughs> this would be very bad. But he's so late. Yeah. And Moon is close to tier 3. That's going to mean an alchemist, an orb, and more pressure. He actually doesn't prioritize the staff here. I guess if you kite like Moon, you can save those archers even without staff. <laughs> yeah. What's the third hero for Moon? Alchemist again, I suppose. Yeah, it has to be. You need the healing. It's so yeah. tempting to go for Potom, but without the healing, it's like really tough. I'm surprised we haven't seen an expo yet by Moon, but I guess he's still muscling up to tier three to his big army. He's making more wisps. Yeah, I think you can't really expo when you go for this build. Like just like super late you still have to commit if you give the human air to creep a bunch to get a strong army it's going to be really hard after that to keep on fighting and doing well wisps come in but they actually went inside of the tower so one of those took a lot of damage healing spray being used now the naga is inactive and some of the trance as well that tower finally falls but some of the archers in the back also exposed alchemist super hurt already here no potions for him one archer goes down, but now again repositioned. The Treants in front blocking, some of them getting dispelled, but not all of them. Fog Lightning hits again, the Zap helping take out more mercenaries. Footies and Mercs again trying to hold on. In the slow, thanks to the Mud Golem on the Keeper, he's in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, those Footman defense still hard to deal with here for Moon. Archer is kind of trapped at the back, are going to get chased away. He's going to stab the Keeper back home. Maybe buy a Staff of Preservation now, but TH with a big hold here, thanks to all of those mercenaries. Moonstone into instant shadow melt, by the way, forcing a dust. And TH suddenly, he's rich. More than a thousand gold. MK finally coming. Lumber still a little low, can't rush tier 3 instantly. But I think now he does. And Moon is just gonna start creeping instead. Could use uh, maybe a greater healing here. Oh, scroll the beast. Oh my god. That might be even better. I was wondering if he might maybe go for an expand behind this or keep on attacking, but if you find a scroll of the beast, it's it's go time. Yeah, that main has only one arcane, by the way, which might be sniped easy. But there you also militia support is very strong. Level's not too crazy for Moon yet. Three, two, one, but he is close to level ups pretty much everywhere. Did he go frozen arrow plus fort lightning? Yeah. Hmm. And he starts off with cold arrow when he comes out on tier two. Yeah. And, and later it becomes useless. Yeah, we see some spell shields on that. It depends how the game's going. Now he definitely needs frozen arrow, I guess, but you can turn it off obviously later on. Oh, push into the main by TH. Knows he can't really creep anything anymore, so may, may as well apply pressure. How much so damage does he have? Level two, by the way, now. So those footmen are gonna melt pretty quickly, and TH doesn't have that, you know, full tier three army just yet. And Moon doesn't have a TP, by the way. He's sending the keeper back to the shop. I think he's gonna buy TP, staff to his army, and then TP back home. But he's starting to work on the towers before. Yeah, he's probably trying to do as much damage here as he can, and then TP out at the last moment that he has to. There is Nature's Blessing, so this tree is pretty survivable. He's gonna repair with everything, but he actually doesn't have much gold. 
I think he can just leave some trains behind. I mean, obviously TH will TP to his expo then to defend. Moon really delaying that one TP here. He knows that as soon as he TPs, TH is going to TP out. That always feels so bad. Because you know he's going to escape pretty easily. He might fake it with the staff. No, that's actually the real thing. Oh my god, he's surrounded. Some of the archers immediately surrounded. Dust is used immediately. And TH delayed the TP a little bit. He gets some kills for it. Wow. Great job by TH, realizing he gets some kills there with an eager TP. There was also a lot of peasants going down. Almost every single one. So this wrecked the wood economy of TH, actually. Because he lost so many peasants that he now has to replace. He's not mining that much wood. Look at his wood economy. If, if I look at me being on 50 supply and having had expo for this long and you only have like this much wood, it's not, not actually that good here for him. Especially, he broke up keep immediately. Still a very tight game here. The defenses at the expansion are broken, so this one can be attacked over and over. Now, TH has to rely on his army to hold on against the Knight of Tier 3. Is he strong enough yet? He's waiting for the Paladin. MK is only level 1. AM is almost level 5, though. 60 supply for TH. And level 1 Mountain King is not that scary, unless you can catch heroes like he did before and kill them very quickly. Trayan's gonna force TH to move onto the expansion. Moves, Moon sees him uh, moving there. Ooh, Alchemist is almost 3. Maybe yeah. get the Morlock. Actually, it's already gone. Not the most mana here, especially on the Keeper. That's why he's gonna staff him back, I guess. Yeah, Moon tank is coming! Oh. Wow, the single tank. Actually, that's so annoying to deal with, right? You send that to the Night Elf base and then yeah. you on a bunch of the Moon Wells, but Moon has a staff and he's got giants. Giants are pretty good against tanks. But he knows that Moon's going to be on the other side of the map pushing right now and trying to kill him. So this is just a way to buy time, maybe to force a mistake out of Moon and overreaction. And Moon has everything right now in this attack. Nothing at home to defend. Pawn starting to come in. Acid Bomb connects nicely. Heal spray over the top. Naga still in trouble. In lots of trouble. Transferring Maybe item something. Time. Last second staff. Ooh, he goes for the keeper. TH with the insane heal target. There's a TP. Is he going to have to use that? Tries to run away. There's no more mana burn this time because he's not playing with demon second. The Naga is going to be up next on that list here. And there's no staff available to save her. Oh, eating spray. Oh my god. Saves it barely. And Moon just TPs out here. He wants to deal with that tank, he's taking a lot of damage, he's still at the Treants attacking the peasants in the meantime, but the knight intervened. And that's Siege again holding on, surviving, still mining off of two bases, now on tier 3. Oh, look at Moon's head. He's tilting his head. Taking a huge yeah. sigh. He's just gonna he... tap out. Yeah, he he's was... fed up of the human imbalance, Remo. <laughs> <laughs> he was supply blocked because of that tank, couldn't get the Naga back. Would have taken too long, I guess, to get back to Triple Hero. And TH gets the 2-2 for our next full best of five. Oh, what a wonderful day we got here. Two semifinals, both of them going full distance. And every single map seems to have a new, different flavor to it. This tank, so smart. If you <laughs> buy the time, if you need to get off a little bit of pressure, like... Even it works like this, he sees, okay, Moon Wells wrecked, or Moon has to react, and then there's time for you to build a real army. Ah, these Chinese humans and their tanks. <laughs> the one lone tank. Brad Pitt was uh, in charge of this one. <laughs> like in Fury. <laughs> Remo, by the way, I think you have to refresh the stream. You're lagging a little behind compared to us. And there's a little bit of a break, as we always have, going into map five. Six minutes, as Wong telling us. Do you guys need a break as well? Um, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed. All right, then we sent you guys into a little five-minute break. After the highlights here of Echo Isles, TH not giving this up. Oh, wait, this actually... Ah, there, it was the wrong highlights for a second. Here it is, game three. Moon again, just like Lolai did so many times, try trying to break this expansion, but the Chinese units, they seem to have their number, they seem to do the right decisions all the time, and they hold on, and they hold on, and they hold on. 
And all of a sudden there's tier 3 and this tier 3 Night Elf doesn't cut it anymore. Not even with two orbs. It is a crazy back and forth. At some point a hero dies with Stormbolt. So we're going to a little break. See you in a bit. We're back with the second semi-final and it's a semi-final of epic proportions. It's another 2-2, two, two. it's another full best of five. Infi is waiting in the grand final, Lawlight in the game for third. Will it be an all Chinese grand final? We haven't had this in a long time. It was TH versus Fly in summer of 2018, two years ago. It would be a final without Korea. That's almost unthinkable. We had Moon versus Foggy, we had Moon versus Happy, we had Lin versus Happy. Could be a new dawn. Now that the two Chinese human gods are back, they are showing us how it's done. Where does it go now? What do we have? Northern Isles. That was the starting map for Lawlight and Infi, and it's now going to conclude the second semi final. Remo, where do you think this is going? Moon tried to go for this Engine of War thingy. Do we see that on Northern Isles again? I. I feel like this is going in TH's direction. I feel like as long as TH gets up his expansion, he's too good to break. He's too solid to make big mistakes beyond that. And when he was able to stabilize on two bases with tier 3, he keeps on getting the win. On LR, the fast expo was cancelled surprisingly. On AZ, the fast expo was cancelled a little less surprisingly. So now Northern Isles, if we keep following this trend, Maybe it's going to come down to whether TH is able to pull off pull off that fast expansion, which usually he should be able to. Yeah, unlike on Echo Isle, there is no access to mercenaries uh, on Northern Isle. Does Moon maybe try and hard counter TH if he thinks that TH is going to straight expand and just run there immediately? It's so risky because if it's anything else, he's way behind. If he gets it right, though, and he has two Wisps in position, it could be really good for him, even if he just has two Wisps in position, actually. But if you're TH and you anticipate that there is so many different things you can do, you could, let's say he just scouts and sees it coming, he can already react so much better against it. Does Moon mix in a different hero, you know? Like on this map, you can go for an Ancient of War close to the Tusker and open Warden, but if then TH straight expands, it's still very tricky against that. So, I mean, so many options and with all the pressure in the world, they're both going to have to stay very calm and play their absolute best. Question to you, Todd. You, of course, have been in these shoes as well. Semi-final, single elimination, going all the way. What does this little break do to you now? Is that good because you can refresh? Or, especially from the perspective of Moon, you lost the last map, does that drain you out a little bit? Because you have that in the back of your head during the yeah. break. I think it's for sure, like, I mean, it depends. It can be beneficial to kind of relax and refocus and everything, but also sometimes it can put you to sleep a little bit, like you'd like to, you know, play immediately in the next map. So it really depends. I feel like these players are so experienced that it's for sure going to be beneficial for them. You know, they shouldn't let it get them tired. I mean, obviously there is more matches later. It's not that late just yet. Just focus entirely on this last map. This is like where it all matters. And uh, I don't think they will mind necessarily a ton. I mean, it's more annoying for the guy that just lost the map, obviously, right? All right. We see them, the two gods. It is time to decide this. The never ending battle between Moon and TH. WCG 2013, where TH crushed Moon's dreams is of course one of the most more legendary ones between them. TH, will he be the first player to win the Gold League three times? Or will Moon go into his third Grand Final? It's all coming down to Northern Isles. Who, with great pleasure, boys, I hand it over to you. Please lead us into the Grand Final. Damn, dude, we are blessed with good games today. We're blessed with amazing games today. And this yeah, we is shouldn't mention be. it too much because otherwise 3030 for the next <laughs> <laughs> I hope we won't jinx it. So far, everything is going pretty well. So, what are we gonna see here now? Moon in the bottom left, TH in the top right. We see an Ancient of War towards the Tuscar camp right away again for a fast level 2 and the big item 
Big mana potion here can oftentimes change the course of an early game, be it with a keeper or possibly with a warden. You mentioned it. This could be a warden, but it doesn't seem like that's most placed out at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, it doesn't seem like TH really has any weakness against any hero. It just seems like the best, one of the best things you can do right now is play with keeper in general. So that's what they've been doing, but. It's, yeah, it's such a hard choice. I feel harder for Moon to pick what game plan he goes for. You know, for TH, it's pretty straightforward. You open Archmage, you creep a certain way, then you most likely do an attempt to expand. But it's for Moon to try and disrupt that. That's He's the one who has the pressure on him. And instant expansion is normally what we've been seeing from the humans. Go over to the gold mine, creep that, get level two, hopefully don't lose too much, and then expand behind. Lolliot early was able to beat that with a crazy push towards the opponent's main there, Infi, falling. But I imagine TH will be looking out for all kinds of things like that. Yeah, the great thing about creeping the expansion directly on this map is that you don't always necessarily have to take it either, right? If you scout and you see the opponents making a ton of units, you know, like you scout, like, I don't know, let's say a Huntress all being dropped immediately behind and you feel like it's going to be some sort of mass tier one, you can just send those peasants back to the main base Take to tier two and then creep to level three very easily. But creeping it first is for sure very, very good. Regardless, now, Moon, how many Wisps is he going to dedicate to try and disrupt that? He's going to grab the item, I'm sure, and then start running across the map. And he gets a greater healing. Okay, with that, perhaps he can stay in there, tank a little bit more damage for a little longer. That footy, how much can he do? Getting ensnared? Maybe not that much. If he can steal this last hit. This would be tremendous. Toscar is still up. He's going after the ancient of <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, it's close. Uh, doesn't get it. Two whisks coming in. Great detonates, but oh the camp is already dead. Both water elementals about to drop. Moon is going to get perhaps a little bit of experience here. AM got the parry up. That's not going to do much for him right now. Some peasants being sent Yui, back to the main. The detonates, were they a little bit too late maybe? The camp yeah, was think, basically gone. I think the water elemental, like the one of them expired. He was like on one hit point, Moon wasn't targeting it, and then it expired. So he put it on really low hit points and didn't get the experience for it. That's kind of sad. Some of the peasants in the peasant line are very low. I think Moon should aim for that here. Did he mess up the summon though? The second trend spawned elsewhere. And he's headed back for the expo. Kind of looked like it was stuck there, but does actually survive. That peasant somehow also survives in the you peasant line. The he almost looked for a second like TH might not expand. But I think he was just sending some of the peasants back and he's still going for it now, starting an Arcane Tower. Or a tower, a scout tower rather, in the main base here now already. Okay, Moon is more damage. Yeah, this was not too many peasants going down at all. He's out of mana. Seems like he has to go for a Telestaff now, get back to the Moonwells. It is ready, the item at the shop for 150. He's still sharking around the main. What is he hoping to accomplish here without mana? I don't know. It's pretty weird. It feels like he should have gotten out of here already. Maybe the overlay is wrong and he has a mana pot or something instead of a greater healing, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, maybe he wants those peasants. But I mean, he's still wasting a ton of time. Wait, yeah. set, I see a lot of unit movement towards the expo here on the minimap. What is that? AM crept up a little bit more. Now 2.6, not so far away from 3 anymore. Tier 2 about to finish. That should mean Naga, or is it going to be more defensive demon play again? Normally, Demon Hunter 2nd <clears throat> was only chosen when the expo was cancelled, which certainly this time is not the case. He has so many archers, and he didn't pressure at all with them right now. I think he's hoping that TH will Yui be out of position and the archer can walk into the expo. But our oh, water elemental spots them. This is huge. Does it expire as well? I'm not sure. I think he did. Keeper's 2.4. Okay, maybe not. The okay, keeper can replenish full mana easily here. He didn't get a staff. So Moon is tier 1. He was tier 1, no? No, Moon's tier 2. Okay, well, I was like. Damn, those reforged graphics. Woo! <laughs> More practice. <laughs> the Naga's out now and looking to do more damage, but that's a shot to 
towards the top left. Okay, interesting. Centangle time. Okay. And there is no defense just yet, it looks like. So those footmen are gonna die very quickly. He's going for the Naga. Oh. But Archmage has no boots. Heal oh. pot transfer? Oh, he already had it. Okay. Cast TP, TP out. Ooh, yeah. So now if, if the Archmage gets caught, yeah. we're really bad. Does he have a shot, even? I don't think so. A bit more experience for the Keeper, getting closer to three. We have some Wisps up here still. He's starting a shop inside of the main base. But that's so late. Like, this Archmage, it's still on, like, less than uh, 100 hit points. Moon looking pretty good here. If he can kill that's that a tower. A lot of archers repair on the tower. A little bit late, perhaps. Moon changes targets. Militia coming. Footy's coming. But the AM is still too afraid. There's still no defense. Archer is going low, he's going for the Water Elemental. Keeper getting dangerously close to level 3 here. If he can get the chop here, he can get a ton of clarities. Yeah. Another entangle, another kill. And by a ton, I mean two. Grab the staff as well. Moon has some resources here. And indeed he does. <laughs> Cool staff there. Gets the Naga back to heal. Also gives solo experience to the Keeper, who's now almost level 3. Towers coming in the main. No tech still. But the expansion is looking rather fortified now. Blacksmith coming as well for TH. And more towers. TH is really worried, and he should be worried. Because Moon's got quite a few archers here. A push is super dangerous. Is he going to move in to kill the shop? Yeah. Should be you enough damage, one maybe. Two ah, two but with the Night of coming in, it's dangerous. Level 2 Entangle. No, level 2 Treants, actually. Oh, yeah, level 1 Entangle is enough for these footmen, usually, to just target. And the Treants do so much. Especially if he rushes Nature's Blessing, which it's well worth. Mana Potion on the, uh, on the Keeper. He might try to, like... Summon three times in a row Treants and then just go broke for, on this tower. He's and it's for the human to just kind of stay right behind him. But TH is playing so scared that I think Moon might be hoping he just moves too far out and then he can kill the tower beforehand. TH playing this super well. Playing perfectly at range. Moon just let the archers work on the towers, I think. Yeah, now they return. Oh, the AM! Wait a minute! He got surrounded, entangled, he's trying to walk out, but still getting slowed down by the Naga. The next entangle is coming in, and for once he's not looking. That's the AM hitting the deck, level 2 for the Naga. Keeper's out of mana for now, but still has that mana potion, thanks to the shop in the top left. Pops it here, and suddenly, that's a lot of stuff going down for TH. Still yeah, has, he has some footies left, though. He's gonna instant revive, he's already gonna re regeneration scroll to heal on the Archmage a little bit, but he has no clarity, so there's gonna be no water elemental for a very long time here. But he's got so many footmen by now that he's chasing back all of these archers. Oh. I can only imagine Moon is must be getting pretty close to tier 3 here though, despite getting that many archers. The archers were lost there, kind of running into the footman's open arms. And the Archmage, oh my god, he's so deep. Where is he gonna go? If he, like, a TP can be forced again. It would be really good for a moon, obviously, to force that on the Archmage, because then there is always the threat of Entangle, but all of those archers were forced all the way back home for now. He's not sending them to the moon wells? Okay, there we go. Heroes at the expo? Whoa! Really? Leaving the archers to their own devices? Yeah, he has orb. But he can't kill these towers. Over time, yeah. these towers will clean this up. I think it's not the towers he wants, it's all of those peasants. But TH already has so much wood, it's gonna be easy for him to replace the gold pet. Oh my god, I thought that Alchemist was gonna get surrounded, but not quite. But he killed a lot of peasants here, I see quite a few bodies. Archers are getting chased by the footies, but they have the same move speed. So they should be fine. Tier 3 is coming, MK is coming. I don't know guys, it looks like TH is stabilizing again. Yeah. Doing pretty good. I think he's got like the right amount of towers as well on the expo that 
it's very hard for the night elves to get in there and like you know break that with archers or like do a lot those can be repaired and moon again committing to this one base full archer style no sign of an expansion at this point it almost feels like he's hitting his head against the wall uh, from this stage onwards like once th has properly secured the expo once he's going for tier three he has the mk on the way yeah. i think there's still a window here where moon can do a lot of damage he's got his tier three now but it's getting better and one one already on the footies wow and he's getting more upgrades from that blacksmith yeah he started getting that very early Yeah, this alchemist is uh, going balls deep here. Mountain King was there, actually. He could have gone and bolted and surrounded, but there is staff and he knows that, so he didn't even commit. I think for TH, is being super patient during these attacks. He's always like, oh, all I have to do is not fight you, and then once you fight the towers, then I come in and fight you. So you're fighting both at the same time. You He's getting a workshop, by the way, which against this strategy, you don't necessarily need, you know? Like, you're supposed to get priest and knights and a third hero, but... That one tank last game, he was the final nail in the coffin. Okay, Moon now switches gears here. He goes for a bit of creeping. Wand of the Wind can be really good. Reclaiming these two camps in the middle. Very valuable thing to do when you have map control, which Moon still does. Can he still counter expand or is it too late? Yeah, pre dispel Wand of the Wind here is super scary. Like always so much potential for some good target fire. Man, okay, Moon going to creeping here. This is so strange. Surely he's gonna wanna attack after this. He's just trying to get like some good items, some scrolls, maybe an involved as well. A giant is gonna rejoin this location. Get some items from the shop, I suppose. MK already level 2. Oh, Scroll of the Beasts. Well, there better be some wisps in the area because you need to remove that ASAP. Normally, Moon was always great at bringing those, never forgetting about them. TH now in upkeep. Knights are coming. This tier 3 for the human is starting to come online. Archer's trying to take out the towers, but mass repair, not so easy to do. Oh, I am again getting focused in Wolf Forced. That was scary. Focus also on uh, yeah, surround on the keeper. And if he forces the TP out here, there's so much time bought. And that is the TP. Wow, he transferred Cloak of Shadows, but then he realized that oh, three it was too risky behind. Anyway. Yeah, that, this is bad. Because even if they Shadow Meld here, TH can send a Militia to the lab on the bottom. And behind this, he's going to be able to creep that camp at the top super easily. Or even he has a flying machine for detection anyway. TH is so far ahead now. 62 supply. Surely is going to be buying a staff and moon with that surround here in a world of trouble. Like, he can only keep on attacking as well. Like, it's just too late to expand now. Tough position for moon. It very much, much looks like we're going to have a Chinese grand final. TH with all the advantages in the world. Yeah, look at Moon's facial expression. Like, he's having a hard time keeping it together, I feel like, almost. He knows that he's in a really, really bad spot here. He's going to need a miracle to win this one. And TH, he's not really the kind of guy to give you a miracle here. He's going to run around, wait for the longest time possible, and then finally engage into you. And yeah, that one tank on the other side of the map, again... Mountain Giant will grab a tree here to try and do some extra damage, but he's busy macroing on the other side of the map. Whisk coming in here. There was a cycle on the pallet and he's trying to target the Mountain King, but not even... Yeah, the Mountain King is not taking out damage. The Keeper gets surrounded. It almost went down. And there's just so much human. Once again, TH going for the hero focus quite heavily. That seems to be working out. He's not losing anything anymore. Not enough DPS to threaten these units. The archers are exposed. Thanks again to the gyro. So many going down. Moon drops to only 42 supply. TH still at 70. TH on his way to the grand final. Moon tilts his head. Is that him losing hope? It might be. TH yeah. just has too much at this point. He already had 1-1 one, one earlier. I can only imagine he might be on 2-2 two, two upgrades now. TL hasn't used the Scroll of the Beast. He's got the Paladin. The tank escaped with one hit points. If he could stab that, that'd be amazing. But I think he's about to get caught at 2, maybe. 
that tank forced the MG out of the fight, the second MG. And dealing with one MG is much easier than two. Well, creeping now. MK's gonna be three. Pally's gonna be two. Almost at least. Inner fire is gonna be a real pain here as well. Like, you, again, you just need so many wisps. We're on one base, you can't really afford. TH almost on 80 supply. I think he's done it here. Moon will try for one last time, but I don't think it's meant to be here for him. Throwing everything in that he has. Naga very far forward, basically begging for the hero focus. There must be a staff for her, I assume. We hear more and more archers dying. They don't find the good position anymore. Divine shield just to be safe on this paladin. Don't want to risk anything. Finds a swarm bolt on the Naga. Again, that would be an easy surround, but there is a staff. There must be a staff that wasn't. Perhaps on cooldown, that's it, GG! TH makes it through, Moon, the big favorite, will be playing the third place match, but not the final. We're gonna have Infi and TH battling for the championship. Oh boy, is China back on the top of Warcraft or what? Crazy performance by Infi and TH. They just had the longer breath. It felt like at the end of the series, Moon was tired out, he dragged them all the way to game 5 and all of a sudden there were mistakes and maybe concentration lacking a little. But boy, what a back and forth uh, fourth series, man. Unbelievable. TH and Infi, the two humans in the grand final. Todd, your comments. <laughs> How many undeads did they meet on their way there? Uh, zero. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they show the world again um how how great they are strategy wise and not copycatting each other but finding different solutions it was th with the tanks usually a unit that i would give to infi instead not the dual racks for th as well very different approach to this challenge but dreamo we saw yule cup not too long ago and law light was crushing th in the final there, and it didn't even look too close. What changed in that two to three weeks that Yuen can't be beaten anymore? I think they just cleaned up their play a little bit. Still that TH is able to hold on on two bases with only one barracks. Just perfect engagements, perfect militia call, perfect defense of the expo. In that last game, I think the harass by Moon in the early didn't go that well, but the humans back in their uh, defensive mental state, in their defensive meta. Just expand, hold on, survive, don't die, and then let tier three carry you. Looking so strong here. Of course, surviving until that point is very dangerous. Only the very few, very fewest can do it. TH and Infi both prove that they can. I must say I'm surprised that Moon played it so straightforward and predictable. He always pushed against the expansion. Sometimes he was able to cancel it and that worked out well, but other times it didn't. And he always pretty much all in push. There was no transition into counter expo, no tier 2 smart play with the zeppelin drop, creating space, getting his own expansion up and then getting, I don't know, mass MGs or anything else. It was just push, push, push and hope that it works, but if it doesn't, that loses you the game. I definitely agree, and if you compare Moon's game with Lawlight's game, Lawlight's game, I think, had a lot more finesse, had a lot more creativity. We had a push to the base, then we had a push to the expansion, then we had a Warden thrown in. Moon was pretty much always the same, as you say, so... Yeah, I feel if you swap the semifinals, maybe Lawlight is beating TH, um, because I felt overall he, he played better. And the first semi-final was a even more high class than the second one. But I won't complain. I won't complain about the games and I will not complain about the games coming up. The game for third is the CC Masters Grand Final Rematch where we saw two times Warden in a Night of Mirror. And Infi versus TH is the rematch of the World Cyber Games 2019. Almost exactly one year later. That's the story that Warcraft writes, and TH writing history right here with the third grand final. We go to Shanghai for the interview.
你好，毕叔。哎，蛋总你好，恭喜啊！三比二的这个利克莫恩闯进了决赛，现在感觉怎么样？平复一些了吗？啊，现在巨累无比，我我其实。我都觉得自己决赛还不知道能不能打好，特别特别的累。呃，因为还有一场 BO 五可以休息嘛，我觉得待会儿休息一下应该精神会好一点啊。我依稀还记得昨天采访你的时候，你预测呃英菲可以三比二击败罗雷特，然后胜出。这个上半区的预测你准了啊，跟你说的一样。下半区你当时预测是自己会一比三输掉，哎，但是今天却三比二赢了，这是为什么呢？呃，因为。他的打法其实有点过于明朗，就到后面我可以说是越打越顺。他他一开始搬了 DS， 其实已经明告诉我他是用 KOG KOG 首发的。就呃到后面我我已经摸透了他的大体思路吧。他的整体思路就是在 A 七色色色的基础上加一个自然祝福，然后头两盘我也是。打得非常非常的吃力吧，然后其实第三盘，第三盘 C H 一度都要输了，就 C H 那盘一一度要输，就靠靠两个围，靠一个围杀吧，击杀了那家，关键性的击杀英雄加一个神围吧，就比较紧张的关头围了 K O G， 然后就可能还可能我会被三比零，但是一下子就可能气到了我这一边的，就。其实我越打越顺了，他就到最后一盘可以看出来他有点泄气。是的，在五局的比赛里面，莫文全都是使用了 KOG 作为首发，而且大多数的盘数里面是用那家二发。那刚才其实蛋总提到了第二局 CH 里面十三分钟的时候，先后击杀那家和 KOG 是一个翻盘的关键。那同时我们也观察到五局比赛里面，你赢的三局都是你。呃，开二框开的比较顺利，莫恩的骚扰不太成功，而你输掉两盘里面，基本上都是单框和对方对峙到底，或者说很晚很晚才有机会去开二框，是不是说在目前的情况下，如果是单框的竞技，人类打暗夜的射射射基本上是处在下风呢？嗯、呃，我最下风的主要是英雄吧，就是他二发的 D H， 然后我没有二发血法，像第二盘我是没办法侦查，就是没办法去大家侦查，然后第一盘的话。我其实看到 D H 的话，我当时 M K 造了一半，可以直接交换血法，就我不是说完全打不了嘛，就可能血法血法会好很多，但是 M K 就可能是真的打不了，就因为不是火枪的情况下，牵制不了小精灵，然后小精灵的作用会非常的大，就在这么打消耗的情况下，其实人族的优势是心灵火，然后打小精灵可以把我爆干，就在。D H 把我三个英雄抽干脖，然后小精灵把我的法师爆干，就特别难打。好的，那不管怎么说，三比二是站到了这个决赛的赛场上啊！这个蛋塔再次会是到这个当今魔兽最高水平的这样一个比赛，可以说是大快人心。那在最近你和这个英飞的训练里面，你们俩谁胜率高一点？能透露吗？呃，最近的胜率是我。比较高，其实我用的 UD 和暗夜陪他练，然后还有用兽族陪他练，就是我用兽族陪他练的时候输的比较多，然后用 UD 暗夜的时候就我胜率比较高。嗯，当时，当时也是，就他他的他没有我那么早练习，他的练习可能比我少一周时间，所以很多很多战术就一开始他都不知道该怎么打。所以待会儿你们的决赛会你会变种族吗？呃，决赛不会变了吧？我们应该还是人族类战。OK， 明白。啊、嗯，好的，那好好休息，待会儿决赛好好的发挥，加油。好，谢谢。好。Right, interview over, and Wong again. Gonlan Harbor best has translated for us.、Uh, Th, how do you feel? He is very, very tired. He doesn't think that he's gonna do good in the grand final after a two-hour series. He has some time to rest, so maybe that will fix itself.、Uh, Th, he said. Infi will 3-2 law light, and you said yourself will lose with 0-3, but now you won. What was the reason? And he said that、uh, seeing the map picks and bans, he thought it's very predictable what Moon was doing, and he was identifying this、uh, strategy more and more, and he understood the strategy more and more. And then he got some hero kills, and he got a little lucky, as they always say, and then he won from there. Uh, question three: In the three maps you won, you had the expansion 
on the maps you lost. You couldn't expand. Is that the only solution to the mass archers? And he says, uh, depends also on the hero. He thinks they have big disadvantages in heroes and wisps are really, really good as well. So, TH in the recent practice versus Infi, who has the better win rate? And TH says he has the better win rate, but he used Night Elf and Undead to practice with him. So, uh, will we see a human mirror? TH thinks so. We got a 15 minute break. Todd, thank you so much for helping us out here during the semi final. Do you have any shout outs to do? Where can people find you? What's next? Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, yeah, just follow me uh, at Todd on Twitch. And uh, shout out to Aragorn Wong for the amazing translations in the chats and letting us know what's being said in interviews as well. Much love, guys. Enjoy. I'll be watching. Todd, real bro. Have a wonderful Sunday. We go into the game for third. That's going to be Lawlight versus Moon. And if you can remember the matches of the CC Masters Cup, that's going to be epic. If they play their best. And even if not, it should still be fun. Um, and then, of course, the grand final later. Little break. See you in a bit.